Hello my dear lovely students I hope you all are doing fine and once again welcome back on this amazing platform of physics wala where I Ayushi Agarwal your botany teacher is going to start the next the fourth chapter of class 11th that is morphology in flowering plants so are you all excited this chapter holds a very very much importance if i talk in terms of neat every year questions are asked and with my past experience i have realized that there are so many students who are always facing trouble in this chapter when the teacher is teaching they find it very easy but it when comes to learning all the students are worried about before the exam every student is worried about this chapter so now all your problems will be solved in just this one short lecture you will find some amazing way of learning this chapter very simple very crisp and very interesting correct so i hope you all are excited so why not to directly start the chapter that is your morphology in flowering plants oh okay so i have something special and some little bit tips in order to enhance your life so before starting with the chapter directly i have something to share with you all which is very very important and when it is a high time for neat students right now they are worried about their neat preparation students are moving here and there going listening to this person listening to that person that how to be focused how to develop interest in studies when it's a high time for neat so i have a very simple and very easy and meaningful quote in front of you students that is life is not a remote control get up and change it by your own self see life has no remote control means what like this ac this is ac this is the remote of my ac so if i want i can do any change in the ac according to my wish so can you do the same changes in your life suppose i am not liking this day can i just change and can i go in my future or can i go back to my past no because life is not a remote control try to understand you have to live each and every day in your life and you have to experience everything you cannot skip any of the emotion you cannot skip any of the feelings and any of the day any even single minute of the day you know you cannot escape you cannot fast forward your life you cannot rewind your life so what is the solution of this when your life has no remote control then the only solution is you yourself get up and change your life accordingly do rather than sitting and thinking ki what will happen next rather than thinking in that manner students please get up it's a high time just rejuvenate yourself get all the energy and power in your system and please start accordingly start practicing rather than complaining start practicing right get up early in the morning start your work do not get up late first and foremost thing is to change the timetable to change the biological clock in your own body and then you see that how the difference is going to appear so first make a change in yourself do not think that your life will be changed by some other person because there is no remote control system it is you who have to guide your life who have to lead your life so be the leader in your life and then you just see the changes correct so i hope everybody is going to listen to me is going to lead your own life in a positive manner start working stop thinking and stop just imagining stop dreaming just try to work hard in order to fulfill your dreams and it's a high time to do so only few days are left for your neat examination so that is why this statement is 
appropriate is 100% appropriate then don't let anybody to control your life let you be the leader of your own life start get up start working hard and make your dreams come true hope you have understood hope this little bit of message is going to help you and is going to push you to work hard and achieve your goals correct so now with this motivation with this spirit let's start the new chapter that is morphology of flowering plants very very interesting first we are going to start with the introduction of this chapter introduction means that from where we are going to start the chapter but at this chapter morphology means morphology means what studying of external structures in this chapter you are going to study all the external structures of the plant body like flowers fruits leaves roots stem etc all the external parts of the plant body will be taught in this chapter now question comes from where this plant arises so this plant this whole big plant arises from a small seed yes or no so there are seeds which are protecting inside the embryo and when these seeds they get the favorable condition the embryo within them start germinating to give rise to plumule and radical plumule later develops into shoot system and radical develops into root system and finally a whole full fledged plant body is established correct so from where the plant life starts the plant life starts simply from a seed yes or no suppose this is a seed the seed is enclosing the embryo group of actively dividing cells suppose this is the embryo correct now when the seed is going to get the favorable conditions then the embryo cells will start dividing and this will start producing a plumule that is growing vertically upward and a radical which is growing vertically downward so this part is radical and this part is plumule right slowly and steadily more active cells are there on the tip of the radical and tip of the plumule these group of actively dividing cells are going to further divide and this plumule will ultimately develop into a shoot system and the radical is going to develop into a root system and after some time you will see that this plant which is young which is juvenile a time will come it will establish itself as a complete mature plant body bearing number of leaves flowers and fruits correct and all these together are the external parts of the plant body the study of external plant of the body is known as morphology so now what are we going to study we are going to study all those external part of the plant body one by one and the first part which we are going to consider is the root system correct yes or no come on so then let's start with the first external part of the plant body which is roots now what are roots is this a new term are you hearing this term for the first time then your answer should be no ma'am since second and third since the science started in our life we are hearing this term root stem leaf flower fruit so these are no new terminologies we all know that roots represent the brown part of the plant body which is growing inside the soil correct 
so these roots are brown part the descending descending means the part of the plant body which is growing downward so descending means downward so it is that part of the plant body which is growing vertically downward vertically downward means towards gravity and away from the light so can we say that the movement of the root is positive geotropic positive geotropic means that the roots are growing towards gravity and when one thing is growing towards gravity it has to grow away from the light and if it is growing away from the light then that type of movement is known as negative phototropic that means it is negatively phototropic means it is growing away from the light so roots are brown part of the plant body that grows vertically downward in the soil they show positive geotropism and negative phototropism they are actually responsible for holding the plant body in the soil they are responsible for providing anchorage to the plant body in the soil correct their main function is to help in the absorption of water and minerals do we know this part yes now do roots bear nodes and internodes kya roots ke paas do roots have some actively dividing cells called nodes from where some new structures can arise no roots do not bear nodes and internodes so they lack nodes and internodes they are brown means they are non green so can they perform photosynthesis no roots cannot show photosynthesis rather they are responsible for providing anchorage and absorption of water and mineral from the soil yes or no now from where are the roots arising students have i told you that the roots are arising from the radical of the embryo embryo starts germinating give rise to radical and then these radical they grow further they branches off to form the complete root system so these are the points which you have to remember for roots that they start from the radical of the embryo during seed germination will you remember all these points for roots very good moving ahead now types of root system there can be three types of root system tap root fibrous root and adventitious root first we are going to talk about the tap root system what do you mean by tap root tap root system means when the main root is arising directly from the radical that means for example this is the soil right here is the seed having the embryo embryo starts developing to give rise to plumule that grows vertically upward and radical that grows vertically downward now if this radical if the cells of the radical actively dividing cells of the radical they keep on dividing and they give rise to main root called as primary root which then laterally branches off to form secondary root which again terminates which again branches off to form tertiary root so this was the primary this is your secondary and these branches are the tertiary roots together comprises of tap root system which arises directly from the radical so we can say that in case of tap root system radicals are long lived they keep on growing to form primary roots that branches off to form secondary and secondary further branches off to form tertiary roots 
all together this whole bunch of roots is called as tap root system and this tap root system is mainly observed in case of dicots like mustard presence of tap root system is observed in majority of the dicot plants right so this is about tap root moving ahead to next which is fibrous root system now what happens in case of fibrous root system fibrous roots means the roots which initially originates from the radical however radical is short lived unlike that of tap root where radical was long lived in fibrous root system radical are short lived that means what radicals they grow for some time but then they are replaced by more number of roots arising from the base of the stem like for example this is the soil correct initially there was a seed embryo plumule radical correct initially radical started growing started growing this whole above the shoot system is producing right a time will come that the seed will vanish correct now initially there was a radical like this but now the radical is replaced radical was short lived it was about to form primary root but before that it perished off and gave rise to new bunch of root system that arises from the base of the stem correct and this bunch of root system that arises from the base of the stem is known as fibrous root system as observed in case of majority of monocots like wheat yes or no i hope the two root systems are clear tap root and fibrous root moving ahead to the third type of root system which is adventitious adventitious my dear students means false not true correct so why these roots are called as adventitious because the roots which arises from any part of the plant body other than radical root means radical tap root may be in case of tap root the roots were actually arising from the radical fibrous roots also initially the root started arising from radical however the radical was short lived and the root system got replaced but in case of adventitious root system there is no role of radical roots may arise from any part of the plant body other than radical for example you see in case of banyan tree all must have seen banyan tree right in banyan tree there are huge stems and from the stems are hanging some additional roots those hanging roots are prop roots which are adventitious in nature clear yes or no so what is adventitious root system the roots which arises from any part of plant body other than radical clear yes or no like for example banyan tree theek hai small clip i will show you of a banyan tree 
Suppose this is my huge banyan tree. Correct? These are the branches of banyan tree. And from the branches, there are hanging some root-like structures. Not root-like structures, actually roots. These hanging, these hanging root-like structures are nothing but the adventitious roots called as prop roots yes or no i hope types of root is also clear now moving ahead towards the functions of root already told you main function of roots is to absorb water and mineral apart from absorption of water and mineral they also hold the plant body in the soil that means they provide anchorage they also provide support obviously they are holding the whole plant body if you cut the roots automatically the whole plant will fall correct so the major support of the plant body because of which it is standing erect is roots only and some plant growth hormones like auxin is also synthesized in the root system which is one of the very important phyto hormones so these are the list of the functions performed by roots you have to remember all of these questions will be asked from the segment yes or no correct so now moving ahead functions is done next is regions of root suppose if i have a primary root now i want to divide i want to study each segment of that root that is called as regions of root so typically we can divide a root into three regions region of elongation region of meristem and region of maturation so one by one i am going to tell you all the features of three different Met, uh, three different zones of roots chalo so let's start without wasting time first i'm going to draw you explain you over there and then we will come to the writing part suppose this is my root correct the tip of the root is soft is delicate and right the tip of the root which is called as root tip is soft and delicate which need to get protected see when the primary root when the roots are penetrating inside then it is actually the root tip which is which is having actively dividing cells and this root tip is responsible for taking the root deep inside the soil but it is delicate it may get damaged and if it get damaged then automatically the growth of the root is going to get stopped hence it need to get protected so this root tip this root apex is protected by a thimble like structure a cup like structure called root cap so what is root cap it is a thimble like structure that is responsible for protecting the delicate thin tip of the root clear now slightly above the root tip contains some group of actively dividing cells so just slightly above the root tip there is group of actively dividing cells and this region where group of actively dividing cells are present just above to root tip is known as region of meristem correct yes or no in region of meristem my dear students the cells are actively dividing they are young they are immature they do not have any function to perform rather than dividing so what is region of meristem region of meristem is the first region proximal to root tip that comprises of group of active
actively dividing cells correct second such actively dividing cells my dear students they are young and immature young and immature cells who possess dense cytoplasm and thin cellulosic cell wall you know it is a plant body and in plant body the cells the plant cells they do not have dense centrally located cytoplasm rather their cytoplasm is towards periphery and they have thick cellulosic cell wall which is dead in nature however when these plant cells are young when they are immature then they have thin wall as well as they have a dense cytoplasm correct so these cells are young and immature hence they possess dense cytoplasm along with thin cellulosic cell wall correct yes or no very good now moving slightly ahead of region of meristem if you go more proximal to region of meristem then you get this is your region of meristem correct above to region of meristem there is region of elongation region of elongation so if i talk about the location of region of elongation then your answer will be it is present proximal present proximal to the region of meristem first point second point the cells over here have lost their capacity to divide once the cell loses their capacity of division they escape from region of meristem to region of elongation but still the cell size is small so in region of elongation cell has stopped dividing but they are growing in size that is why this region is known as region of elongation cells are elongating cells are maturing they are developing more vacuolation and they are allowing walls to become more thick correct so region of elongation is characterized by non dividing cells non dividing cells which are growing in size so cells are expanding thus in this region the elongation is going to take place of the entire root right now above to region of elongation comes the region of maturation which is the topmost region which is again proximal to region of elongation from region of meristem beta now in region of meristem it comprises of those cells which are completely mature which are completely non dividing and now they are ready to perform function of mineral absorption as well as water absorption hence the cells from the region of meristem they give rise to unicellular hair like outgrowths called root hair correct so what are root hair root hair are unicellular elongations from the region of maturation that are responsible for more water and mineral absorption so what region of maturation is made up of first of all it is located 
proximal to region of elongation first point second point the cells are fully mature they are ready to perform functions so cells present in this phase are fully mature correct moving ahead from here arises root hair arises which are unicellular in nature for more mineral and water absorption for water and mineral absorption clear to everybody i hope all the three regions is clear so these are the regions of the root three regions of the root region of meristem region of elongation and region of maturation followed by root tip that is protected by root cap whatever points i have written these all points should be there on your tips if you learn these points if you go through this video lecture then i assure you that all the questions which will be asked in neat or which are, are already been asked you will be able to solve each and every one of them correct so please pay attention to pay attention to this thing and please be focused now students moving ahead now you know the main function of the root is to provide support or maybe like mineral water absorption or maybe like anchorage but if roots are performing some extra functions apart from absorption and anchorage then that is called as modification of roots so next topic is modification of roots where we are going to study that roots can perform some additional function apart from absorption and anchorage correct and first important modification is storage some tap roots of carrot turnip and radish as well as adventitious roots of sweet potato they are responsible for storing food you like carrot you like radish you all eat salads and in salads the main things are what turnip sack radish carrot right so what are these these are actually the roots of the plant body when you are enjoying your carrot you are actually eating the root part of that plant now ma'am roots are brown you only said they are brown thin and we cannot eat them they are not fleshy how can we eat the root because in case of plants like carrot radish turnip sweet potato their roots they modify apart from absorption they also get some additional function of storing the food which the plant is preparing correct now see this is the soil this is the above part of the plant body that is responsible for preparing the food correct now this is the root system some of the roots in case of carrot turnip radish what they do they modify themselves and they start storing the food that is produced by these plants so the leaves which are preparing photosynthesis which are doing photosynthesis they prepare food if excess food becomes then they go and store in their roots and thus the roots they become fleshy roots kaisi ho jayengi roots will become fleshy and they will modify themselves to either form like carrots radish turnip sweet potato etc and then what you do you pull out this plant you remove the shoot system you clean the carrot and then you enjoy it so actually what is carrot it is the modified root clear shall we write it so first modification of root is storage where the tap roots of carrot turnip radish and adventitious roots 
of sweet potato you all like sweet potato it is also a modification of root sweet potato they are responsible for storing food which you enjoy correct now moving ahead second important function modification of root is providing support additional support apart from the main roots in case of sugar cane you must have observed some additional thin roots coming from the nodes first of all i'm going to show you the sugar cane you all must have seen right so i'll draw it with the this pen okay suppose this is my sugar cane sugar cane is a plant my dear students whose stem bears highly distinct nodes and internodes so this is the stem of the sugar cane correct which is having distinct nodes and internodes yes or no very good now this is the soil below soil is there their root system suppose this is their root system now apart from this root system sugar cane dear students they also give rise to additional roots that arises from the lower nodes some additional roots arises from the lower node that also start growing vertically downward and provides additional support to the plant such roots are known as stilt roots so what are stilt roots stilt roots are those that arises stilt roots the roots which arises from the lower nodes of the stem nodes of the stem for providing support yes or no now is this clear with the help of the diagram very good so second important modification in root system you have seen of support that is in case of sugar cane such roots are called as stilt roots moving ahead towards the third modification of root some roots which are seen in plants growing in marshy areas some roots in those plants they also help in respiration now how ma'am roots are growing vertically downward how they will help in additional respiration see let's see it happens let's see so respiration in plants like for example rhizophora rhizophora my dear student is a plant that grows in marshy area how many of you know what is marshy area marshy areas are those where a uh, water content in the soil is very high there is soil and in soil the water content is very high because of which the air in the soil soil particles have air yes or no but because of excess of water those air are trapped and the soil air is very very less because of which the roots they are not able to respire properly they are not getting the proper air from the soil due to excess of water so such areas are called as marshy areas and one example of the plant growing in marshy area is rhizophora so what the roots will do they are not able to respire when they are present downward so unfortunately they will come vertically upward so the roots which grows vertically upward see difference normally roots they grow downward positive geotropism but these roots in rhizophora they grow positive phototropic and negative geotropic they grow vertically upward so rhizophora may roots growing vertically upward to trap oxygen to trap air for 
respiration right such roots are known as pneumatophores so the roots which grows vertically upward are known as pneumatophores suppose is a normal plant right the normal roots which are growing downward but some roots they turn upward like this some roots they turn upward above the soil to trap oxygen and these roots are pneumatophores for respiration so roots apart from absorption of water and mineral apart from anchorage they can help in storage they can help in respiration they can also provide some additional support so these are the modifications which you have to remember and with this first external part of the plant body is done right yes or no now before moving ahead to the next external part of the plant body that is stem i would like to tell you something something like talking about the quote which i used when i started the class that is life is not a remote control you have to handle your life by your own students please please take this thought very seriously why you have to take it seriously because nowadays after covid students have become not students even we people the elder ones the adult ones have also become quite lazy we want that let's sit in the room and why not mummy give everything papa give everything see papa is earning he's bringing the money mummy is cooking the food she's giving delicious food but till when so realize that thing and come out of the covid start working then start working hard for your own dreams for your own good don't think that if you'll work hard then your parents will get some benefit no they will be happy they will be happy to see you grow correct but actually you are growing for your own benefit so what parents will think that is secondary but first be selfish start working hard for your own self don't think that if you get good mark if you get selected in neat then how your parents will feel they are going to feel good but see how your life is going to change after that be selfish over here work hard for your own self be a daydreamer as well as be a one who fulfills his own dreams correct so it is very very important students that you get up you start working hard you prove yourself you prove your worth not only to your parents as well as to your relatives not for their good but for your own good correct so i hope everybody is going to take that thought very seriously that life is not a remote control stop trying to control your life or stop trying to act like a remote bus start working hard get up do your work do whatever is required do all the those hardships in your life which is going to make your life blossom correct so with this moving ahead towards the next segment which is called as stem now what is stem stem represents the shoot system of the plant body shoot system means it is the green part of the plant body that grows vertically upward just opposite to root system it develops from the plumule of the embryo it shows positive phototropism but negative geotropism it is that part of the plant body which bears flowers fruits leaves etc also helps in the conduction of whatever is absorbed by the roots so if roots are absorbing water and mineral they are going to give it to stem now it is the role of the stem to transfer whatever it has absorbed to either root to either fruit stem uh, leaves branches etc so what is stem stem is the ascending part 
aerial part of the plant body that arises from the plumule of the embryo responsible for the conduction of water and mineral bear flowers fruits and leaves unlike that of root stem bears nodes and internodes so slightly i'm going to talk you talk about what are nodes and what are internodes suppose this is the stem right wait let me draw a small stem suppose this is a stem and this is the root system below correct the tip of the stem it consists of some group of actively dividing cells called as shoot apical meristem right now when the shoot apical meristem when the cells of shoot apical meristem they are dividing then only this shoot system is growing vertically upward yes or no now while this sam is growing upward with the help of its actively dividing cells some of the actively dividing cells are left behind those some regions which are left behind are nodes correct so nodes represent the actively dividing region on the stem first point from the nodes arises leaves from nodes what is the location of the leaf the leaves arises from the nodes the gap between two nodes that consist of mature cell the non dividing cell this gap is known as internode so what is internode internode represents the mature region between two immature region how nodes comprises of actively dividing cells and you know that actively dividing cells are immature correct so what is internode it is a region of it is a mature region region of mature and differentiated cells correct and from nodes arises leaves now apart from giving rise to leaves these nodes are also responsible for forming some buds some condensed actively dividing shoots called as buds buds can be of two types depending upon their location either terminal bud also called as apical bud the name itself suggest the bud which is present at the top and second is axillary or lateral bud my dear students axillary buds are always present at the axial angle of leaf here can you see this so this is a leaf and this is the stem and this is the axial angle can you all see this so this is the axial angle here the bud is present which is called as axillary bud correct it is actually arisen from the cells of the shoot apical meristem which were left behind an axillary bud also contain a group of actively dividing cells which can divide further to either form a branch to bear more leaves yes or no so this is axillary bud this is axillary bud this is axillary bud so axillary buds are always present in the axial angle of a leaf and a stem terminal buds my dear students they are located at the top so this is the terminal bud whose role is to allow the growth of the plant body so terminal bud is present at the tip of the shoot whereas axillary buds are present in the axial angle of the leaf and the stem whose function is to produce a branch so that plant body can grow laterally as well yes or no 
Is this concept of nodes, internodes and buds clear? Very good. So with this moving ahead, functions of the stem, I hope it is clear. The main role of stem is to conduct water and mineral and whatever is absorbed by the roots plus bearing flowers, fruits and leaves. Now, next moving ahead, apart from these main functions, as you saw in case of root, stem can also modify to perform some other functions, right? And that topic we are going to study under modification of stem. Now, stem can be present in three areas. Suppose this is the soil. So, there are three regions of the stem. We can divide stem into three regions. The aerial stem. Aerial stem means the stem which is present quite far from the soil. Second, sub-aerial stem. The stem which is above the ground but close to the soil. Above the ground but close to the soil. Tick. And third is underground stem. The stem which is present below the soil. So how many regions of the stem are there? Three. Aerial, quite above the ground. Subaerial, near to the ground. Underground, below the soil. Right? All these three regions of the stem can show modification in some or the other different plants. And one by one, we are going to see all the different modification of all the different parts of the stem. Starting with aerial stem modification. Shall we start? So there are three different aerial stem modification which you have to study. That is stem thorns, tendrils and phylloclads. Are you all ready to study the three different modifications of aerial stem? So one by one, let's see. Number one is thorns, stem thorns. Very easy. What are thorns? In Hindi, thorns are the kata. Correct? They are the prickles. If, if you touch the thorn, if they are going to prick your body, definitely you are going to come in pain. So in some plants like citrus and bougainvillea, you must have seen citrus like lemon, right? And bougainvillea also you must have seen whose leaves, basically the bracts they modify to form flowers. You all must have seen they come in so various colors. When you go on the road, then on the side of the roads, there are so many bougainvilleas being planted. So, bougainvillea and citrus as a defense mechanism, in order to protect them from the browsing animals, they form thorns on their stem. Now, see, where? Wait, let me choose a pen. Okay, so come here. Now, see, suppose this is my plant. So, this is my above ground stem, right? Now, this above ground stem is bearing what leaves and you know in each leaf in the exile angle of each leaf will be present what will be present group of actively dividing cells called axillary bud here axillary bud here axillary bud here axillary bud now in plants like citrus and bougainvillea these axillary bud my dear student they modify to form thorns so what are thorns thorns are modified axillary bud which helps in the defense mechanism of the plant example citrus and bougainvillea so what are thorns modified axillary bud Example, citrus and bougainvillea. What is the role? Defense, protection. Is it clear? Yes or no? On similar ground, in some plants like pumpkin, right? In some gods, like your uh, uh, bottle god and in some pumpkins, watermelon also. Tendrils are there. See, Tendrils means those structures will help in 
climbing so in some plants like pumpkins and watermelon the stem axillary bud modifies to form tendrils that help in the climbing these are weak plants gods and pumpkins and all they are weak plants their stem needs some extra additional structures for climbing for growth therefore they perform they form what they form tendrils so see this now suppose this is a stem correct soil now nodes from every node is going to arise what leaves are going to arise and at the axial angle of every leaf will be axillary bud so these are the regions of axillary bud normally role of axillary bud is formation of branch but in case of gods like pumpkin etc these axillary bud they modify to form beautiful tendrils right that helps in what that helps in climbing yes or no i hope the first two aerial stem modification is clear now moving ahead with the third one that is phylloclads all must have seen opuntia euphorbia that is cactus plants and all all must have seen growing somewhere near to your home so in them you must have observed that their stem in opuntia the stem is not uh, brown or thick normally what happens when the stem becomes mature it becomes slightly brownish in color na right and becomes thick and it start bearing leaves and all flowers fruits etc but in plants which are growing in xerophytic conditions their leaf they reduce to spines to avoid transpiration so who is going to perform the function of photosynthesis therefore their stem in such plants they modify themselves they become thick green fleshy they start performing photosynthesis and storing the food and such stem which become thick juicy green fleshy is known as phylloclads so phylloclads are those where stem modifies to perform photosynthesis and storage of food so modifies to perform photosynthesis and storage of food correct so such stem they become thick juicy and fleshy called as phylloclads the two example which you have to remember is opuntia in opuntia the shape of phylloclad is the shape of the phylloclad in case of opuntia is flattened somewhat like this whereas in case of euphorbia the phylloclads are cylindrical like this so it's something like this and these are the leaves which are reduced to spines correct so this is phylloclad this is phylloclad i hope all the three aerial stem modification is clear to every student now with this moving ahead towards underground stem modification underground stem modification is also very important usually questions are asked from this section so please my dear students pay attention underground stem modification in this you have four categories tuber bulb and rhizome one more category is there of combs 
so first the three which we are going to cover is tuber bulb and rhizome are you all excited very good so first if i talk about tuber the very well known example in tuber is potato our life is impossible without potato can you even tell me one vegetable name which is not using potato whatever mummy prepares vegetable at home she is surely going to use potatoes so potato is a staple food it is one of the most important ingredient which is used in every part of our country it's a household name yes or no everybody agrees and we all love it especially i i am a potato fan and that's why i'm becoming like potato as well okay so moving ahead with tubers so tubers are what tubers are underground stem modification now let's see that how this yummy vegetable is prepared how this yummy vegetable is basically prepared by the plants okay suppose this is a potato plant this is the soil i mean sorry this is the above ground stem this is the underground stem right and here are the root systems now what and happens above ground stem is bearing leaves let me draw some leaves right this is above ground now this underground stem it branches off laterally what happens the underground stem in case of tubers they branches off laterally and start storing food on their terminal ends so this underground stem is what doing it is branching off laterally and on the terminal ends of these branch they start storing food and they modify to form some swollen structures that we call as potatoes take out one potato so this is a potato what is this potato actually it is the modified underground stem underground stem branches off and then on the tip of those branches food is stored so that tip of the branch will get swollen because of the storage and then that swollen structure is taken out by us and enjoyed as potatoes remember this very good now this because it is a stem modification now it is underground stem and stem bears nodes and internodes so potatoes also have distinct nodes these nodes which you call them as eyes yes or no so yes potato bear eyes and on these nodes are present axillary buds so here are the axillary buds on these eyes or nodes correct you must have seen that if you keep a potato for few days you don't use the potato and you keep it in your kitchen for some day and then those potatoes some sproutings comes up some white or yellowish sprouting comes up from the nodes from the eyes those sproutings are actually growth of the apical axillary buds yes or no and this is called as tuber is tuber clear to everybody very good so one example of tuber which you have learned is potato moving ahead to next underground stem modification called bulb bulb the famous example again the most common vegetable used is onion and garlic and both are underground stem modification that is bulb now how this bulb is prepared how the onion is prepared very interesting preparation pay attention question will be asked so no need to get distracted then please come and let's see how onion is prepared so suppose this is the soil this is the above ground stem this is the underground stem right now this underground stem is having the again followed by root system the above ground stem is having what 
it is having branches uh, leaves and all shoot system so this is the beautiful shoot system of the onion plant right now this is the underground portion what happens this underground portion of the stem it get reduced to form a disk like structure correct what happens this underground stem it reduces to form a disk like structure you must have imagine the onion can you imagine the onion the the part of the the part of the onion which you cut and remove you all you all must have chopped an onion while chopping an onion what do you do you remove the lower part now so that lower part is actually the stem which you remove this is bulb the part of the onion which you throw out while chopping the onion is called as bulb and that is a disk like structure disk like structure which is representing reduced stem correct yes or no so ma'am you are saying that we have thrown out bulb you are saying that bulb is actually the reduced stem which we cut out which we chop out and throw then what the hell are we eating in onion what are you eating in potato you are eating stem agreed in sweet potato in radish carrot you are eating root but what about onion what are we eating onion if you are saying that stem is being chopped off then my dear students oh these reduced stem the stem this underground stem have nodes correct underground stem my dear students can have leaves but those leaves are not green rather they are called as scaly leaves so underground stem have scaly leaves arising from the nodes so these are scaly leaves correct they will not have underground stem will not have leaf which are green because yes an underground stem there is no light for photosynthesis hence the leaves which are present on the underground stem are are scaly leaves they are brown scaly leaves correct now these scaly leaves they start storing food so bulb is actually reduced disk like structure which is chopped off on the stem are present scaly leaves the scaly leaves my dear students they store food right so they are responsible for storing food and thus these scaly leaves due to storage of food they become fleshy and then they get cyclically arranged around the bulb lower are the adventitious roots so these are the roots which are present over here and this is how your onion is so what are you eating what are you eating in onion tell me you are eating the leaves and what are you discarding you are discarding the stem clear now very good so this is about your bulb moving towards the third stem modification which is rhizome the best example of rhizome is ginger again a very important ingredient especially for me when it comes to tea i am a tea lover i am a tea fan but i only love that tea which is having ginger a ginger without tea i cannot eat i cannot sorry i cannot drink okay so so what is ginger which we all enjoy in our different food items is rhizome and what is rhizome rhizome is a stem modification it is an underground stem modification now let's see how is this rhizome our underground stem modification so similarly we are going to use it with the help of a diagram soil above ground underground now what happens my dear students first of all let me draw a beautiful shoot system right so this is the shoot system of a ginger now underground stem students 
on the base of the underground stem food starts getting stored in horizontal manner correct so in the underground stem the food start getting stored in horizontal manner to form ginger having distinct nodes and internodes yes and from the base arises adventitious roots so what is rhizome rhizome is actually the underground stem modification where storage of food takes place horizontally to the soil clear or not yes or no and the nodes and internodes are distinct can you see can you correlate with this diagram how many of you can imagine that yes it is a ginger yes it is a ginger of course because ginger also bears distinct nodes and internodes and ginger se niche you must have observed sometimes you get a very raw ginger from the market some root like structures are arising those are actually adventitious roots even you see them from the bulb as well in bulb also you see these roots right so have you all understood the all three underground stem modification one by one tuber bulb rhizome potato onion ginger the three important ingredients in our life are actually underground stem modification yes or no done very good so we have completed with aerial stem modification as well as underground now what is remaining the third is very important which is remaining sub aerial stem modification yes or no okay so now we are going to start with the sub aerial stem modification that includes four runner offset stolon and sucker one by one we are going to discuss all let me tell you beta runner and offset are comparative whereas sucker and stolon are the two sub aerial stem modifications which are comparative and if you understand that comparison that learning becomes remembering becomes very easy so first let's start with runner as the sub aerial stem modification the best example to remember in runner as sub aerial stem modification are grasses grasses my dear students they are runner now what happens in runner suppose you plant a grass suppose this is a soil right here you have planted a grass correct now suppose there is a ground and on one corner of the ground you have planted a grass that grass automatically will cover the entire ground you need not to plant everywhere grasses to cover the entire ground with it why because runner because grasses they vegetatively propagate with the help of runner sub aerial all the sub aerial stem modification are showing vegetative method of propagation be it runner be it offset stolon or sucker all four are vegetative method of propagation so grasses they propagate vegetatively by the method of runner now see how from the above ground stem let me focus you now from the above ground stem suppose this is a just let me draw a little bit bigger so that you understand it now this is the above ground stem you all can see this now from the node which is present just above ground stem a lateral branch arises which grows horizontal to the soil and then it touches the soil gets the favorable condition develops into a new grass correct again from here from the lower node a branch is going to arise that is going to grow horizontal to the soil and again it will touch the soil to produce a new grass 
so can you see that how the grasses are vegetatively propagating by developing a short lateral not short little bit long lateral branch that is growing horizontal to the soil now this is one node this is second node can't we say this branch as an internode what is internode internode is a gap between two node so this short lateral branch that is growing horizontal to the soil is actually between two nodes hence it is hence it can also be called as internode so in case of grasses in case of runners there are long internodes which are represented by a branch arising from one node growing horizontal to the soil this is how runners are and this is one of the vegetative method of propagation on land on soil similarly if you observe in case of water then that method of vegetative propagation is known as offset like for example in icornia and pistia these are two examples of aquatic plants which propagates vegetatively through offset method which is similar to that of runner however having short internodes icornia is commonly known as water hyacinth or terror of bengal suppose this is a this is my water surface right this was this is soil surface now on one side your icornia is plant is placed in the water icornia is characterized by having beautiful flowers and leaves and because of this reason only it was brought to india it is actually exotic species in india which was brought in india for its beautiful flowers and leaves the leaves are usually cyclically arranged one after the other and there are tuft of roots arising under the water now from a node from the node arises a very short lateral branch that again terminates into a new plant roots arising below and cyclically arranged rosette like habit leaves above again a branch will arise a short node a, a short lateral branch will arise horizontal to the water surface terminates into a new plant so this is the internode again one node another node the gap between two node internode but here the internodes are short such that these small plants they cover the entire water surface if from the above you watch it if from here you watch it then what will you see you you won't be able to analyze that whether it is a water surface or a land surface how because from above you will see only the green leaves and mauve colored flowers because it is growing so fast and the internode the branches are so short that the leaves are overlapping one above the other and they cover the entire surface of the water right yes or no so this method of vegetative propagation is known as offset method now moving ahead towards the third that is sucker in sucker you have three examples to learn p c b pineapple chrysanthemum and banana so these are the three examples where sucker method is used for vegetative propagation what happens soil right this is the soil surface this is under normal like this right now this is a normal plant growing of maybe pineapple banana or chrysanthemum which one you consider now my dear students in case of sucker from the lower ground of the stem arises a short branch from the node of the lower ground stem arises a branch 
that grows first downward and then it turns vertically upward as soon it as it touches the soil it breaks and develop into a new plant again from here note a short lateral branch will arise that is going to grow first vertically downward and then it will turn upward to produce a new plant so this method of vegetative propagation where a branch arises grows downward turns upward it is known as sucker just opposite to sucker is stolon stolon mein kya hoga first of all example of stolon are like mint and jasmine mint can also propagate by sucker method right the major method of propagation in mint is stolon however mint can also vegetatively propagate by sucker method you have to remember this thing this question was asked in neat uh, i don't remember the year but there was a question that which of the following organism propagate by sucker method four options were given and out of the one out of the four one was mint and the correct answer was mint only but if preference comes that which is better for mint stolen and sucker then your option should be stolen if stolen option is not given then go with sucker chalo so what happens in stolen and how is it opposite to sucker see this is the soil this is the plant correct now a node from above ground stem first arises vertically upward then touches the soil then turns vertically downward comes near the soil gets the favorable condition produces a new plant again short node from above ground node give rise to a branch that grows vertically upward then turns downward breaks into a new plant so can you see that the concept in sucker as well as stolon is same the method of vegetative propagation the concept of propagation in sucker and stolon is same the only difference is what the difference is that in sucker that the branch is arising from downward whereas in stolon the same branches arising from upward this is the difference and here in runner and offset also you can see there almost the concept is same the only difference is one is on air interface that is soil interface second is on water interface and in case of grasses the internodes is slightly longer whereas in case of offsets the internode length is slightly shorter so this is the only difference between sucker and offset otherwise concept is same and sucker and soil is stolen also the concept is same but with slight difference i hope all the four types of sub aerial stem modification is also clear with this stem is also done so root modifications root concept is done stem is done moving ahead towards the third important morphological feature of plants that is leaves leaves are very very important part of the plant body these are actually the green expanded parts that arises from the nodes yes or no in stem only i have told you so what are leaves leaves are the green expanded part of the plant body that arises from the node on the stem correct so what are leaves leaves are green expanded lateral part of the plant body that arises from the nodes of the shoot in every axile angle of the leaf is present axillary bud so this is the next important point at an axile angle of leaf is present a axillary 
बर्ड करेक्ट येस और नो वेरी गुड नाउ मूविंग अहेड नाउ दीज लीव द मेन फंक्शन ऑफ द लीव इज टू परफॉर्म फोटोसिंथिस अपार्ट फ्रॉम फोटोसिंथिस इन सम प्लांट्स लाइक ब्रायोफाइलम एंड बिगोनिया दीज लीव कैन ऑल्सो बी यूज फॉर वेजिटेटिव प्रोपोगेशन सो नॉर्मली द फंक्शन इज फोटोसिंथिस Apart from photosynthesis, leaves can also be used for vegetative propagation. Correct? Yes or no? Okay. Now let's discuss structurally. Structurally, leaf consists of how many parts? Three parts. Now, structure of the leaf. Okay. So leaves they are typically divided into three part as leaf base suppose this is the stem with which the leaf is attached let me use some different color so this is the stem okay this region is the node the part of the leaf with which it is attached to the stem is known as leaf base so what is leaf base leaf base is that part of the plant body with which it is attached to the stem first point second it may be swollen in case of leguminous plants and that swollen leaf base in them is known as pulvinous correct and third important point leaf base may give rise to some small leaf like structures called stipules so what are stipules stipules are the leaf like structures that arises from the leaf base leaf base may be swollen in case of leguminaceae and that swollen leaf base is known as pulvinous now shall we write the points yes ma'am so what is leaf base leaf base part of the leaf with which it is attached to the stem correct second it may be swollen called as pulvinous in leguminaceae plants in leguminaceae family you observe this and give rise to lateral structures called stipules right moving ahead to the second part of the leaf is the stalk with which it is attached the stalk like structure which is called as petiole so second important part is the petiole some leaves may be without petiole also in that case those leaves will be directly attached to the stem but if the stalk is present then the stalk is known as petiole c so three parts are base lamina and petiole so what is petiole petiole is the stalk of the leaf with which it is attached to the stem so petiole stalk of the leaf may be present may not be present if it is present and its role is to help the leaf flutter in the wind fluttering so that cooling effect can be brought so petiole helps in fluttering of the leaf fluttering of the leaf that keeps the leaf in the air so that cooling effect can be brought correct and the third and the most important part of the leaf is actually the one which you see this whole green part this green part of the leaf is known as leaf blade or leaf lamina so the third important part is actually called as lamina or the blade it is actually the green expanded part which you see right this leaf blade the tip of the leaf blade is known as apex correct 
the margin this is the margin now in the center it will bear a thick vein called as mid rib so this is the mid rib in the center this mid rib it breaks into it breaks into number of veins and veinlets it breaks into number of veins and veinlet so what blade what lamina consist of leaf lamina consist of apex margin mid rib veins and veinlet this is how the typical leaf appears to be i hope it is clear now moving ahead to some new terminologies related to leaf so what is lamina let's write it is the green expanded part correct which bears network of veins and veinlet and the center vein being the most thickest one called as mid rib now these network of veins and veinlet is known as venation so the next important topic is venation what do you mean by venation venation simply means network of the arrangement pattern of the arrangement of veins and veinlets now what is the role of these veins and veinlets the role of veins and veinlets is to allow the proper conduction of water and mineral and prepared food in the entire leaf so what is the role of this this veins and veinlet the main role is proper transmission of prepared food and water and mineral in the entire leaf venation can be my dear students of two types as reticulate venation and parallel venation very very easy reticulate means network the term reticulate itself means network so what is reticulate venation see majorly it is observed in case of dicots suppose this is a leaf when the leaves have veins and veinlets in network like manner anywhere any veins is growing so when the network like arrangement of veins and veinlet is there then that type of venation is known as reticulate venation parallel venation means parallel venation means when all the veins are arranged parallel to each other either like this or like this so all the veins if they are present parallel to each other called as parallel venation if they are present in the form of network like like this then it is known as reticulate venation presence of reticulate venation is a feature of dicots and presence of parallel venation is a feature of monocots clear i hope what is venation and use of venation is clear moving ahead to the types of leaves now students there can be two types of leaf simple leaf and compound leaf how many leaves can be there two types very easy again all the things are very easy you just take it as a story see let me tell you one thing there are some chapters in botany which you have to take it like a story as if a story is going on listen to this lecture as a story and one thing if you don't want to go through the lecture at once see it's a one shot lecture right and when one shot lectures are there when one shot videos are there of such big big chapters then definitely they have to be big 
no lecture can be like of one or two hours because definitely in one or two hours i will not be able to complete all the important points and i don't want to leave even a single important point because i don't want that any question if asked in neat comes out from the lecture so for that definitely the length of the video is going to be like 4 to 5 hours but what is your duty you can just listen to first half keep it second like after one or two hour when your whole mind is fresh listen to the next half then read your own ncert try to solve the questions from that half which you have read previously then continue the lecture then go to the third part no need to look the entire lecture in one shot who said nobody said what you have to do i am giving you this lecture as one shot as a teacher but as a student you need not to watch this whole session in one go you can break the sessions according to yourself like for example you have decided to watch the video for first 45 minutes in that i have almost covered root and stem so what is your first duty to cover root and stem once you have covered root and stem then read it from ncert compare it solve the questions learn it once it is done then switch to the second half of the video where leaf and inflorescence is covered read it from ncert solve the questions this is the method which you have to follow no need to stress your eyes that looking the video looking the phone for 4 to 5 hours and then saying ma'am i was looking at the video it was too lengthy why to make such lengthy videos no who is saying that go to the videos and listen to it again and again or uh, in one go be comfortable according to your comfort zone divide the video in some segments watch the video in those time limits only read it from ncert solve the question again come back to the video this is how your pattern of study should be correct and it is a high time that one shot videos are very very important we as teachers know that what is important when and now next month you all have to appear for neat and for that one shot videos which are very crisp crisp and very much like related to ncert is now important rather than taking all the extra information just focus on ncert just go through the one shot videos in segments read ncert solve the question this is should be the pattern please students listen to the lecture properly if not in one go make the segments and then do it i hope you all have understood this and you will keep this in mind from the next video that means from morphology video right okay come back to the topic so now i was talking about the types of leaves there are two types of leaf simple leaf and compound leaf first i am going to explain you what is simple leaf and then we will come to compound leaf simple leaf students simple itself means simple yes or no so the leaf whose margin see this was the margin na margin this margin this is a simple leaf why because here the margin is continuous it is same right so the leaf whose margin is continuous or having some incisions but those incisions do not touch the midrib that means like this this is the margin of the leaf margin is smooth yes or no so if the margin has to be either smooth or even if it has incisions like this but like you see in case of rose leaf or having incisions but incisions should not touch the midrib so this is a midrib here is the midrib 
so midrib incisions are there margin is not smooth but those incisions are not touching the midrib then such leaf is also called as simple leaf and in every simple leaf in their axial angle axillary bud is present so axillary buds are always present in the axial angle of the simple leaf simple leaf are those leaves which are whose margin is either smooth or if not smooth incisions present but they do not touch the midrib correct contrary to that are the compound leaves compound leaves are those whose margin first of all is not smooth incisions are present and those incisions they grow and touch the midrib now what will happen suppose this is a simple leaf correct now what will happen with evolution with time if these incisions they touch the midrib they further grow and they start touching the midrib then what will happen each leaf will develop into number of small leaflet now this will become one leaf this will become another leaf another leaf like this so so many leaf will arise from one simple leaf if the margin start touching the midrib now it will come like this so this is one of the compound leaf which arising which is arising from the simple leaf right now this center midrib is now known as rachis and now this becomes the midrib of each leaflet these are leaflets correct this become the midrib of the leaflet and the main midrib is now called as rachis remember one thing my dear student the axillary bud will be present over here the main axillary bud will be present at the main area but not in the axial angle of its leaflet here there will be no axillary bud here no axillary bud here no axillary bud <clears throat> axillary bud is only there at the main area not in the axial angle of its leaflet and this type of compound leaf is known as pinnately compound leaf example you see in case of neem so this type of compound leaf where midrib become rachis and the main leaf terminates into so many leaflets example neem apart from this there is one more type of compound leaf called palmately compound leaf so here only i'm show i'm going to show you palmately compound leaf now what happens in palmately compound leaf similarly suppose this is the simple leaf this is how the simple leaf is correct now what happens the margin is not continuous it is having incisions but in this simple leaf the incisions are not touching the midrib now if they start touching the center not this like this if the incisions they start growing and they start touching the center then what will happen the simple leaf will break into number of leaflets all arising from the common axis and all these leaflets together is known as compound leaf which compound leaf palmately compound leaf so this type of palmately compound leaf is observed in case of silk cotton what happens in silk cotton when all the leaflets they arises from the same point pinnately me kya hua what happened in pinnately the leaflets were not the leaflets are not arising from the same point rather they are, they are present on the rachis which was the original midrib 
but in palmate leaf all the leaflets they are arising from a common point as you see in case of silk cotton this is palmate this is pinnate both are the types of compound leaf in compound leaf the main area is having the axillary bud however in the axile angle of the leaflet there is no axillary bud this is a highlighting point please remember i hope types of leaf is also clear now moving ahead to the next important segment is phyllotaxy now you know leaves are attached on the stem but how so the pattern of the arrangement of leaf on the stem is known as phyllotaxy so next important terminology is phyllotaxy what is phyllotaxy it is the arrangement of the leaves on the stem there can be three types of arrangement alternate opposite and whorled one by one i am going to tell you all the three types of arrangement starting with alternate the name itself suggest if the leaves are arising on the stem alternately from the nodes like this so these are the nodes correct and can you see if one leaf is present on the right side another left right left right left so if this is the arrangement of the leaf on the stem it is called as alternate phyllotaxy as you see in case of china rose mustard sunflower etc just remember the examples given in ncert no need to learn the extra examples from outside no 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 strict no only focus on the examples of ncert they should be on your tips correct moving ahead towards next opposite phyllotaxy what is opposite suppose this is the stem having nodes from each node two leaves are arising present in opposite manner one here another over here then here then here so from each node there are two leaves which are present in opposite manner as you see in case of guava callotropes so this is opposite type of phyllotaxy moving ahead to world world means many things which are present together so in world type of phyllotaxy what happens from each node arises number of leaves so from from when from one node number of leaves are arising and arranged in a cyclical manner then it is known as world phyllotaxy example you have to learn is of alstonia will you remember this thing the three types of arrangement alternate opposite and world i hope it is very very simple the name itself agar if you remember the names if you remember the terms you can guess it the only thing you have to learn is their examples and i have told you stick to ncert only no need to move out of it clear i hope phyllotaxy is also clear now the last topic in leaf is modification like you did for root you did for stem so now we are going to study the modifications in leaf modification means means what the function which is performed other than the main function so the main function of leaf is to perform photosynthesis if apart from that it is doing some job then it is called as its modification right now one modification you have already studied guess where chalo let's go back go back go back go back to stem can you see something on the screen focus on bulb what you are saying bulb is reduced stem and on this reduced stem are present 
fleshy scaly leaves so in case of onion you are seeing the first modification of leaf as storage correct so leaves can be used for storage purpose as well as you see in case of onions the fleshy the leaves whatever you are eating in onion is actually the leaf modification the scaly leaves the underground leaf they modify they start storing food they become fleshy and you are eating them correct okay oh ho where it is okay so first modification in leaf is storage which you see in case of onion second is support support as in in case of p in case of uh, vitis so what you see support how in them beta like in p the suppose this is a p plant these are the nodes from nodes what arises from nodes leaves arises correct but in case of p from the nodes instead of leaves tendrils arises right from the node instead of leaf tendrils arises that help in providing support and climbing so such leaf tendril is one of the modification seen in case of pea plant as you have seen in case of stem tendril now in case of uh, guards and all what you have seen there the axillary bud on the stem was getting modified but here the leaf is itself getting modified instead of leaves from the nodes arises the tendrils so these are two important functions one is of storage onion already explained leaf tendril as support for climbing you have understood moving ahead towards the third important modification as you see in case of australian acacia ऑस्ट्रेलियन अकेशिया में बच्चों क्या होता है वॉट हैपन्स इन ऑस्ट्रेलियन अकेशिया नॉर्मली दे आर मेन लीव मेन लीव आर शॉर्ट लिव्ड एंड स्मॉल एज अ रिजल्ट दे आर नॉट केपेबल ऑफ परफॉर्मिंग फोटोसिंथिस हेंस द पीटीओल ऑफ द लीव दे मॉडिफाई टू परफॉर्म photosynthesis they modify to perform photosynthesis and this modification is known as phyllode so what are phyllodes phyllodes are modified petiole to perform photosynthesis as their natural leaves are short lived and small you see this in case of australian acacia see diagrammatically i'll show you so this is the normal petiole which is bearing number of small short lived leaves now what will happen the petiole will get modified and will get ready for performing photosynthesis now these are petioles and on top of them are their leaves which may fall off any time so this structure where petiole is getting modified is known as phyllode i hope all the three modifications of leaf is clear with this leaf is also finally over i hope you all have understood what is root what is stem and what is leaf now we are moving ahead towards the next important morphological feature that is flower 
now before starting with flower important concept is to understand inflorescence inflorescence what is inflorescence now let's discuss that inflorescence is simply the arrangement of flowers on the floral axis if flowers are born in clusters then how those flowers are arranged on the floral axis that is called as inflorescence so what is inflorescence inflorescence is the arrangement of flowers on the floral axis now inflorescence can be of two types either racemos or cymos now i am going to tell you in comparison that is what is racemos inflorescence and what is cymos inflorescence so first let's discuss about racemos inflorescence racemos means beta when the floral axis when the tip of the floral axis does not terminates into a flower as a result the floral axis is of indefinite length you can say that since the tip of the floral axis does not terminate into a flower hence it can grow for indefinite period and the flowers which are present in clusters are arranged in acropetal manner acropetal means what the younger flowers are present at the top whereas the older flowers are present at the bottom so this is called as acropetal succession so racemos first of all the tip does not terminates into a flower so first point you should know that tip does not terminates into flower now this means what that the floral axis will be of indefinite length and all the flowers they are arranged in acropetal succession acropetal means young ones are present at the top and older ones are present at the bottom clear contrary to racemos inflorescence is cymos inflorescence where the floral axis first of all is of definite length why because the tip of the floral axis terminates into a flower and all the flowers are arranged in basi petal succession basi petal means the older one is at the top and the younger ones are present at the base so cymos inflorescence means when the tip terminates into a flower as a result floral axis is of definite length and second flowers are arranged in basi petal order means young ones are present at the bottom of the floral axis whereas the older ones are present at the top of the floral axis so these two are the type of inflorescence which you have to study it is given in your ncert neat is going to ask question related to racemos and cymos inflorescence only so what is inflorescence it is the pattern of the arrangement of flowers when they are born in clusters on the floral axis how many types of inflorescence are there the two broad categories is racemos and cymos yes or no so this is all about inflorescence now inflorescence is what arrangement of flowers so the next topic will be flower shall we move ahead yes or no yes ma'am very good so now we are going to start with the next important external feature that is flower now before starting with flower let me tell you students how many days are left for need 
those students who are watching this video and are going to appear for neat in the month of july please students number of days are limited now it's a high time that you prepare a proper timetable go through all the one shot videos these one shot videos are specially prepared for those students who are going to appear for need in the next month because we know time is limited yes or no hardly 20 or 25 days are left theek hai now since the time limit is there now time is very less it's not possible to go through each and everything it's a high time that you stick to ncert specifically if i if it if i talk about biology stick to ncert and go through all the one shot videos that i am preparing these one shot videos are very going to be helpful they are literally going to be very helpful i'm going i'm telling you i'm preparing all these videos in keeping mind about those students who are going to appear for neat this month i mean upcoming month so for these for such kind of students these videos are very very important they are highly crisp and they are highly related to ncert so if you look these one shot videos properly go through the lecture properly read the ncert then your bio will be on your tip specifically if i talk about botany then please students go through these videos properly share it with your friends take help give help then only help is going to come in return okay very good so now let's move ahead with the next morphological feature that is flower now how will you define flower flower is actually a modified shoot in chapter plant growth and development you study that due to the hormone florigen that passes from the leaves to the shoot apical meristem shoot apical meristem modifies itself into floral apical meristem and from where leaves or branches would have been arising now from there flowers are born so how will you define flower flower can be defined as modified shoot now what is modified shoot why do we call flower as a modified shoot because with the help of the hormone florigen with the help of the hormone florigen what happens this florigen hormone simply modifies shoot apical meristem into floral apical meristem correct so this hormone florigen which is synthesized in the leaf cells and then these hormone travel from the leaf to the shoot apical meristem thus transforming them and when once floral apical meristem is produced then flowers start arising now flower can be born either solitary on the floral axis or they may be born in clusters if the flowers are born in clusters then their pattern of arrangement is known as inflorescence you have done the topic correct now flower is a modified shoot clear to everybody now you can also define flower as a sexual reproductive organ in the flowering plants angiosperms may in case of angiosperms they have some special structures for reproduction called flowers so flower is the reproductive unit in the angiosperm they are meant for sexual reproduction correct typically my dear students flower is made up of four parts structurally if i talk about then structurally flower is made up of four parts also called as whorls so how many whorls are there in a flower typically a flower consists of four whorls and all those four whorls are present on a swollen structure called thalamus now diagrammatically i'm going to show you over here please focus so suppose this is a swollen structure what is this called as it is called as thalamus 
can also be called as receptacle correct now on this floral on this swollen thalamus all the four worlds are present i am going to name all the worlds from outer to inner so the outermost world is represented by group of sepals called calyx so these are sepals group of sepals maybe three or four sepal in a flower which is called as calyx correct it is the outermost world followed by calyx comes the brightly colored group of petals called corolla so the next world that is inner to sepals these are brightly colored group of petals called as corolla right inner to corolla is present the male reproductive organ called stamens and group of stamens together is known as androecium so these are stamens that represents the male reproductive organ on these stamens are going to be born pollen grains which will carry male gametes so male gamete bearing male reproductive organ is known as androecium correct so outer to inner we are going outermost calyx followed by corolla followed by androecium now let's talk about the innermost world and the innermost world is the female reproductive organ which is known as gynoecium so how many worlds are there there are four worlds in a flower outer to inner calyx corolla androecium and gynoecium out of which out of the four worlds two are essential and two are non essential correct the non essential worlds are those worlds that do not take part in reproduction directly and they are calyx and corolla the outermost two worlds calyx and corolla they do not take part in reproduction directly hence they are considered as non essential worlds but if i talk about the remaining two worlds androecium and gynoecium androecium is the male reproductive organ whereas gynoecium is the female reproductive organ in androecium male gametes are produced and in gynoecium female gametes are produced hence they are called as what they are called as essential worlds correct why because these two worlds take part in reproduction directly they are actually responsible for producing gametes which will fertilize to form zygote clear so how many worlds are there four on where are these four worlds present in a flower on thalamus out of four worlds two are essential two are non essential clear now usually it is seen that calyx and corolla they are distinct they are separate from each other like you can see in my diagram but in some flowers like lily in case of lily what happens beta the calyx and corolla they are fused they appear to be like one world and if that happens if calyx and corolla if they both are fused then it is called as perianth so what is perianth perianth is fused calyx and corolla and this presence of perianth is observed in lily clear yes or no very good so these are the four worlds i hope you have understood all the four worlds what are their roles what are their functions i am going to discuss in the later part of the chapter now moving ahead 
so before starting with the details of the flower let's talk about some terminology related to flower correct before talking about calyx corolla and their etc etc why not to first talk about some terminologies related to flower the very first important terminology which you should know is bisexuality so first terminology that i am going to discuss is bisexuality in flower bisexuality means what a flower which is having both male and repro male and female reproductive organ like my flower this flower whether it is bisexual or unisexual what will you say yes of course it is a bisexual flower because in this flower both stamen and carpel is present correct yes or no so first terminology is bisexual bisexual means the flower which is having both reproductive organ so flower with both reproductive organs right moving ahead opposite to bisexual is unisexual now unisexual are those flowers which are either having male reproductive organ or female reproductive organ but not both clear so unisexual means flower with either male or female reproductive organ but not both clear first two terminologies are clear third terminology is trimerous some flowers are called as trimerous flowers why what do you mean by this term trimerous trimerous means tri means what three so when the floral appendages are present in three or in multiples of three then that flower is considered as a trimerous flower like for example in case of lily lily is a trimerous flower because in lily you will see that all the floral appendages are present in three or in multiples of three when i will teach you the families when i'll come to liliaceae family i will show you that why lily is considered as a trimerous flower but till then you have to wait and you have to watch this video till end correct okay very good so trimerous means when in a flower all the floral appendages are present in multiples of 3 yes or no clear to know how i told you it is example is lily to know why lily is a trimerous flower again you have to watch the video till end now next terminology after trimerous is tetrameres now i hope you will be able to guess what is tetrameres will you be able to guess what is a tetrameres flower tetra means four so when the floral appendages in a flower are present in four or in multiples of four so when all the floral appendages are present in multiples of four like this you can go for pentamerous flowers as well i hope what is trimerous tetra pentamerous is now clear moving ahead towards the next terminology is actinomorphic flowers now it is on the basis of the symmetry in zoology also you do na radial symmetry bilateral symmetry actinomorphic zygomorphic so that is applicable in flowers as well the symmetry which you do for human body and for animal kingdom that is also applicable for plant kingdom 
so in flowers also we can divide flower in three categories on the basis of symmetry and number one is actinomorphic flowers also known as radial symmetry so actinomorphic also called as radial symmetry so what do you mean by radial symmetry any guesses you all are zoology students as well as botany students you should know this so actinomorphic means a flower which can be divided into two equal halves from any plane you cut the flower from any plane it will be divided always into two equal halves are known as actinomorphic flowers suppose this is a flower it can be divided into two equal halves from any of the plane yes or no correct opposite to actinomorphy is zygomorphic flowers what is this zygomorphic flower so i don't have much space i'll use this space yeah zygomorphic flowers zygomorphic flowers my dear students are actually the ones which show bilateral symmetry so what is zygomorphy or what is bilateral symmetry when the flower can be divided into two equal half from only one plane so that is called as bilateral symmetry or zygomorphy so when the flower can be divided into two equal half from one plane only then that is called as zygomorphic or bilateral symmetry as you see in case of gulmohar cassia third type is asymmetrical flowers name itself suggest in flower like canna in flowers like canna these flowers my dear students they cannot be divided into two equal half from any plane from vertical lateral by whatsoever you plane choose the flower can never be divided into two equal half as a result their symmetry is known as asymmetrical flowers so there are three radial symmetry bilateral symmetry and asymmetrical radial means any plane you decide flower will divide into two equal half bilateral any one plane only one plane is such if you take that plane if you divide the flower from that plane then only your flower will be divided into two equal half asymmetry means no such plane is there through which you divide the flower into two equal halves clear so these are the some terminologies which you have to remember for flower so i hope now all the terminologies related to flower is clear to everyone now moving ahead with the structures of flower in detail i have already told you that there are four parts in a flower out of which two are essential and two are non essential the four parts of the flower outer to inner is calyx corolla androecium and gynoecium sometimes this calyx and corolla sepals and petals they may be fused and then that case it is known as perianth as you observe in case of lily so all these points are clear now we are moving ahead with while where i where i'll tell you all these whorls separately one by one so can you see this chart can you see this on the screen so flower into two whorls accessory also called as non essential whorls so now one by one let's study all the four whorls starting with the outermost one that is calyx okay so first i'm going to tell you something about calyx number one point it is the outermost whorl agreed second calyx means group of sepals together 
calyx is group of sepals sepals are those green structures you must have seen a rose flower when the rose is present in its bud stage so the bud stage is something like this if i try to draw i'm not that good in drawing but still if i try to draw yes or no when the rose flower is present in its bud stage then rather than then rather seeing the red colored petals you actually see some green structures which are covering the red colored pel petals inside so these green structures are actually the sepals so sepals are the outermost part of the flower which represent group uh, sepals are the outermost whorl of the flower whose main responsibility is to protect the flower in its bud stage number 1 number 2 since they are green in color so they can also help in photosynthesis correct so what are the two roles of calyx or group of sepals function third point is function there are two distinct functions number 1 protection of the flower when it is in bud stage now slowly and steadily what will happen this bud will start growing and when the bud grows slowly and steadily the petals they open and you can see the beautiful red color petals are rising and coming out yes or no so what is the role of sepals to protect the flower when it is present in its bud stage apart from this since they are green in color they have chlorophyll though so they can also perform the function of photosynthesis right now if in a flower more than one sepal is there then those sepals those number of sepals they may be fused with each other or they may not be fused so there are two conditions in sepal called gamosepalous or polysepalous so number one condition is polysepalous polysepalous means what when there are more than one sepal in a flower and they all are free from each other that means sepals are not fused sepals are not fused rather they are free then that condition is known as polysepalous moving ahead gamosepalous next terminology is gamosepalous gamosepalous means my dear students when there are sepals and they are fused to each other so that means fused sepals clear will you remember these all points which are related to calyx very good now moving ahead towards the next whorl inner to calyx that is corolla so first point that you have to remember for corolla is it is present inner to calyx number 1 now what is corolla corolla represents group of brightly colored petals so this actually corolla is group of petals now petals are brightly colored why you see so many petals red colored yellow orange so many colors why are they so colorful they are colorful so that they can attract insect for pollination right so the main role of petals being so brightly colored is so that they can attract so function is attraction of insects for pollination which is one of the very important event in sexual reproduction right 
now like you have seen two terminologies in case of calyx similarly in corolla also we can use both terminologies that is polypetalous we are talking about petals so terminology changes from sepalous to petalous one terminology is polypetalous and second terminology is gamopetalous now what is poly free what is gamo fused so when petals are free from each other then that condition is polypetalous and when the petals are fused to each other then that is known as gamopetalous i hope you have understood that what is calyx and what is corolla these two are non essential words and if they are fused then one more terminology comes up which is perianth now beta related to these two whorl arrangement pattern that how the sepals and petals are arranged with respect to each other with respect to the members of their own group we have new terminology called aestivation what is aestivation it is simply the arrangement of sepals or petals in a floral bud with respect to other members of the same whorl what this means ma'am this means that if in a flower there are four sepals for example then how these four sepals are arranged with respect to each other if there are four petals then how these four petals suppose these are four petals in a flower then how these four petals are arranged with respect to each other then this arrangement is known as aestivation and there can be four types of aestivation valvate twisted imbricate and vexillary so what is aestivation aestivation is simply pattern of the arrangement of sepals or petals with respect to the members of their own whorl first i am going to tell you about valvate aestivation see what is valvate now i am going to consider that there are five sepals of five petals in a flower matlab i am going to take a condition of five the number i am going to consider is five members either in sepals or in petals now first we are going to discuss about what is valvate aestivation valvate aestivation means when the members of the same whorl are arranged in a cyclical manner and their ends are non overlapping valvate aestivation means when the members of the same whorl are present in cyclical manner without overlapping without overlapping you see this in case of callotropis now what is this now let me explain you with the help of the diagram suppose there are five members theek either you take it with respect to calyx or corolla now the five members all are arranged in cyclical manner correct cyclical means the pattern of the array presence is same and can you see this is one end this is another end suppose this is first member this is second member third member fourth member and fifth member correct each member is having two ends this is the first end second end first second first 
second first second first and second so all the members ends they are not overlapping they are not intersecting with each other they may touch they may not touch if the condition is gamosepalous or gamopetalous then they will touch each other or if the condition is polysepalous or polypetalous then they will not touch each other so but they will not overlap overlapping is missing they may touch each other if they touch then this condition is gamo but can you see the ends are touching but not overlapping and present in cyclical manner then this type of arrangement in calyx and corolla is valvate clear very good moving ahead towards the second arrangement that is twisted arrangement second type of estivation is twisted slight difference from valvate estivation what is that difference see now in twisted estivation what happens the members are arranged in cyclical manner however their ends are also overlapping and overlapping is done in a regular fashion as you see in case of hibiscus in lady finger in cotton so what is twisted estivation twisted estivation means when the ends of each member overlaps in regular manner example like hibiscus correct now see what is twisted estivation with the help of a diagram so that it becomes more clear five members again this is first member now the ends will be overlapping in a regular manner that means if one member one end is inside then its other end will be outside with respect to the next member like this see now this is the second member correct now can you see that the first member this end is outside so this end will be present inside now this is the second member its first end is inside so second end has to be placed outside and therefore third member will be drawn like this getting my point third member now third member first end is inside so just to make a regular fashion this end will be kept outside so fourth member will be drawn like this clear now end inside outside it has to be made inside so now next will be like this so this becomes the fifth member now you can see that all the ends are overlapping but in a regular fashion and what is that regular fashion that if one end is inside then other is outside inside outside inside outside in out in out can you check this out with the help of a diagram i hope twisted estivation is also clear now moving ahead towards the third type which is imbricate now what is imbricate estivation imbricate estivation may be bachcho overlapping will be there all the ends will be overlapping but there will be no regular fashion maybe of one member both the ends are inside maybe second member both the ends are outside third member maybe one end inside one and outside so the overlapping will surely be there but there will be no regular fashion of overlapping as you see in case of twisted estivation clear so what is imbricate estivation when the ends of 
when the ends of each member is overlapping but not in regular manner but not in regularity then this type of estivation is known as imbricate estivation and what is imbricate estivation how you draw it let's see considering the same example taking five members so how you draw it suppose this is first member whose both the ends let's keep outside so this is second member let's keep its both the ends inside third member let's keep its one end out and one end in so this is out this has to be in so this becomes the fourth member and again you can place the fifth member so overlapping is there but not any regular pattern is there such type of estivation is imbricate estivation correct now coming to the fourth and the most important type of estivation which is vexillary vexillary estivation my dear students it is restricted to family leguminaceae leguminaceae now what happens in leguminaceae their flowers their corolla their petals in their flower the members of corolla whorl they are following a specific pattern of arrangement which is known as vexillary so first of all in leguminaceae there are five petals these five petals they show vexillary estivation how first of all beta in vexillary estivation you are viewing the flower upside down the flower is kept inverted so whatever is at the top is actually visible down and water is whatever is actually visible down is actually top means the flower is viewed in an inverted manner not in upright position theek hai so now there are five petals of which the first is the largest petal called as standard now standard is the posterior petal it is the largest petal and it is the posterior petal but we are going to draw at the top why because we are viewing we are observing this flower in an inverted manner so what is posterior comes interior and what is anterior will come posterior so there is one standard the largest petal that overlaps the two lateral wings so there are how many there are two lateral wings correct now these two lateral wings in return overlaps the two smallest fused keel so the two anterior most two first of all smallest anterior most fused keels are present so how many petals are there in total 5 1 2 3 4 and 5 the largest one is the standard that is present at the posterior end that overlaps the two lateral wings in return these wings overlaps the two smallest sized fused petals called keel keel is anterior most but it is visible in the downward direction as this flower is observed upside down inverted clear so these are the four different types of estivation i hope this concept is clear my dear student please 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 try to focus on estivation this section is very very important usually questions are asked from this section either matching in match the following it can come it can come in true or false incorrect correct statement there are so many ways to ask questions in fact diagrammatically based questions are also frequently asked from this chapter in morphology if i talk about diagram based questions are favorite 
so you should remember all these diagrams which i am drawing right so please focus on these diagrams try to memorize them and please try to learn the information given as well it is really going to help you in your neat examination okay so this is about the calyx and corolla that is the two outermost whorls now moving ahead with the third most third whorl from outer to inner that is androecium androecium represents the male reproductive organ it is an essential whorl why because it is responsible for the formation of male gametes androecium is a collective term for number of stamens so here in this diagram the diagram which i have drawn previously of a flower there i have drawn stamens how many stamens i drew two so two stamen together is androecium which is the third whorl correct now if i talk about structure of a stamen which is the male reproductive organ so structurally this is a thalamus on this thalamus is attached the stamen so structurally a stamen is made up of three parts the sterile stalk called filament whose proximal part is attached to the thalamus and on its distal side is present two what two lobes which are connected to each other called anther the two anther they are connected with the help of again sterile tissue called connective so how many parts are there three parts can you name them filament that is the stalk anther and the connecting tissue of two anther that is connective out of which filament and connective they are sterile mainly anthers are responsible for the production of male gamete carrying body pollen grain inside each lobe of the anther there are two lobes so normally in majority of the angiospermic families anther is bilobed there are two lobes in some like malvesi one lobe is present but here no exceptions you have to remember you only have to remember the major portion so normally anther is bilobed each lobe of the anther contains two chambers or theca so each lobe contains what they contains two chambers called theca hence the stamens are bilobed and dithecous two lobes and each lobe is having two thecas hence typical stamen is bilobed and dithecous with respect to both the lobes it will become tetrathecous because four chambers in all overall but with respect to one lobe of the anther there are only two chambers so this is called as dithecous condition two lobes means two lobes means bilobed two thecas means dithecous condition yes or no clear inside these thecas inside these chambers are produced your pollen grains inside them is produced pollen grains which is the male gametophyte for carrying the pollen or oh, yeah these are the male gametophyte pollen grains which carry your male gametes these lobes of anther they will burst and will release all the pollen grains then they will be pollinated either by wind water insect etc so structurally each stamen is a male reproductive organ which consists of a stalk and anther anthers are usually bilobed and each lobe has two chamber that is the pollen sacs the pollen grains are produced in these sacs 
i hope all the first four points clear now there are some statements my dear students who are not able to produce pollen sacs who are so who are not able to produce the pollen grains that means those statements are sterile and sterile statements are known as staminode will you remember this term staminode correct very good now moving ahead with the because we are studying morphology we are not studying reproduction so morphologically these stamens they show two types of attachments the stamens shows two types of attachments one called cohesion and second called adhesion cohesion and adhesion now what is cohesion cohesion means attachment of same type of molecules you know in transport chapter you have studied adhesion means attachment with some other type of molecules right so cohesion with respect to stamen means when one stamen is attached to another stamen in a flower adhesion means when the stamens are attached to some other whorls clear so in adhesion category we have two types one epipetalous and second epiphyllous epipetalous means what when the stamens are attached to the petals as you see in case of solanaceae family petals attached to stamens this is known as epipetalous condition coming to epiphyllous epiphyllous means what first of all this kind of attachment is seen in case of here i can write solanum epiphyllous type of attachment is seen in case of lily do you remember one thing students lily shows perianth not distinct calyx and corolla right so when the stamens are attached to perianth then that attachment is known as epiphyllous type of adhesion attachment so here stamens are attached with perianth clear that what is epipetalous and what is epiphyllous the two types of adhesion very good now moving towards the cohesion type of attachment so if i talk about the cohesion type of attachment means when one stamen is attached to another stamen and here you can have three types that is polyandrous when the stamens are free there is no attachment second monoadelphous when all the stamens they are joined together to form one bundle as you see in case of malvaceae in case of cotton china rose right diadelphous di means two when the stamens they join together to form two bundles as you see in case of leguminaceae family p family polyadelphous poly means many when there are so many bundles of stamen in a flower like for example in case of citrus correct chalo read it now so stamens of a flower may be united with other members that is cohe that is adhesion with other members is adhesion or among themselves among themselves is cohesion so when petals when stamens are attached to petals they are epipetalous correct brinjal is one of the example of solanaceae family second epiphyllous when attachment of the stamen is with the perianth example lily correct so epiphyllous and epipetalous are the two types of adhesions in stamen moving ahead stamens may be free from each other 
number of stamens are there but they all are free that is called as polyandrous but sometimes they may be fused they may fuse to form one bundle like monoadelphus two bundles diadelphus more than two bundles polyadelphus clear or not yes now last point mein kya hai beta sometimes it is observed that the length of the filament in the stamens in the same flower is not same some stamens in a flower are long with long filament and some stamens are with short filament so this variation in the length of the filament of the stamens in the same flower is also observed so sometimes in some flower like mustard salvia the filament length of the stamens in the same flower may show variations usually all the stamens all their filaments are of same size anther will come at the same level but sometime anther may come at different levels due to different length of filament and this is observed in case of mustard salvia yes or no i hope concept of androsium monoadelphus diadelphus epipetalus epiphyllus variations in the length of the filament their example everything is clear if yes then we are done with the third whorl of the flower as well now we are going to finally start with the last whorl of the flower the innermost whorl which is gynoecium gynoecium my dear students represents the female reproductive organ yes or no this represents the female reproductive organ first point second it is a collective term for carpels so female gynoecium is the female reproductive part of the flower which is represented by one or more carpels structurally a carpel consist of three parts structurally carpel consist of how many parts three parts which are located on the swollen structure called thalamus so you know that all the four whorls they are born on thalamus correct the topmost part of the carpel is known as stigma it is the landing place for the pollen grains right pollen grains which are shed from the anther they lie on the stigma they land on the stigma where they are checked for the compatibility and if pollen grains are found to be compatible they start germinating to give rise to pollen tube the place where pollen tube grows that structure of carpel is known as style correct so style is actually a connecting tissue between stigma and the swollen base which is known as ovary so presence of ovary in case of angiosperms helps in the fruit formation correct so carpel consists of three parts stigma style and ovary style is a connecting tube that joins stigma to the ovary the style can be either solid or hollow from inside correct so this is how structurally gynoecium looks like now in the swollen base that is ovary are present ovules which actually transforms into seed after fertilization now these ovules are attached to the ovary with the help of placenta so placenta is a cushion like structure which helps in the attachment of the ovules on the ovary so this is how the simple structure of the female reproductive organ is first thing second now in a flower there may be more than one carpel and if there are more than one carpel then they may all be free or they may all be fused accordingly there are two terminologies used apocarpus and syncarpus 
Apocarpus means students that when the carpels are free, more than one carpel is found, but all of them are free. So simply you can write free carpels. Example in case of lotus, in case of rose. Correct. But now if I talk about sink carpels, sink carpels means fused carpels. When more than one carpel is present and they all are fused. You see this in case of tomatoes. Correct. You see this in case of tomatoes. You see this in the case of uh, mustard, china rose. So many examples are there for syncarpus condition. For apocarpus, you have to remember two examples. That is lotus and rose. Now, my dear students, I used one term called placenta. So, now next topic on this basis is placentation. Placentation is the arrangement of ovules on the ovary wall with the help of cushion like structure called placenta. Like, for example, in mother's body also. The baby is in the womb, but it is connected to the mother's body with the help of placenta. So, placenta is simply a connecting unit that joins the baby to the mother. Here, in case of flower, the baby are ovules and the mother is the ovary wall. So, to connect ov ovules to the ovary wall is placenta, which is a cushion-like structure. Now, there can be four in fact, five different types of placentation. Exile placentation, marginal placentation, parietal, free central and basal. One by one, we are going to discuss about all the different types of placentation starting with marginal. Marginal placentation, the best example is to realize P. You all have seen that P pod, the one which you open and get the seeds. And then you prepare the vegetable out of it. Right? So that pod is actually the fruit. That is called as legume. The one you get, the one you get from the market is the legume. Then you open it. You open the sucher from the center. And then you find seeds are arranged in two manner. In alternate manner in two rows. Correct? So what is marginal placentation? Marginal placentation means... When the ovules are born, suppose this is my opened P, right? Not closed one, it's an opened P. Now, this is the margin. So, when placenta is present on the ventral suture of the ovary, on the margin, so here somewhat placenta is present on the margin. Here is placenta, here is placenta on the ventral suture. Correct? And ovules are present alternately in two rows. So, this type of placentation which is present on the margin is known as marginal placentation. So, what you have to write? When placenta present on the ventral suture. And ovules are born alternately in two rows. Coming to next is exile placentation, which you commonly see in case of tomatoes, brinjal, etc. Now, what happens in exile placentation? There is an ovary, right? This is the ov ovary wall. Now, the ovary wall, first of all, it is divided into number of segments, each called as locules. So, this is your ovary, which is divided into number of segments and making chambers inside it called as locules. Placenta is present in the center, thus ovules are 
present in the center exile means center so the ovules when they are present in the center as placenta is located in the center this type of placentation is known as exile placentation coming to third parietal parietal placentation is seen in case of brassica like argimone now what happens in parietal placentation see there is a ovary with ovary wall now initially when the ovary is young this chamber within the ovary is not partitioned but towards maturity this chamber of the ovary gets partitioned into two due to the development of a false septa called replum so due to the development of false septa towards the maturity of ovary it the ovary becomes two chambered first point second p for parietal p for periphery remember like this and ovules the placenta is present on the margin on the periphery of the ovary wall and thus ovules are present on the periphery so this type of placentation is known as parietal p for parietal p for periphery remember this marginal is very easy just keep in mind p automatically all the points will come in your head exile placentation also exile means something uh, which is in center and parietal p for parietal p for periphery moving ahead to the fourth one the name itself suggest free central placentation so what is this type of placentation this is your ovary with the ovary wall the chamber inside it the placenta is present freely in the center and where all the ovules are born in the center suppose this is the placenta which is freely present in the center around which ovules are born so this type of placentation where ovary is not divided into any chambers simply placenta is present in the center of the ovary and letting the ovules come on it this type of placentation you see in case of dianthus primrose correct yes very good last is basal placentation this is the most advanced type of placentation my dear students which is observed in advanced families correct like asteraceae family it shows basal placentation now what is basal basal means when the o when the o placenta is present at the base of the ovary having only one ovule like suppose this is the base of the ovary this is ovary and this this region is the base of the ovary so here a placenta will be present and inside this placenta there will be only one ovule so when placenta is present at the base of the ovary and only one ovule is found so this type of placentation is known as basal basal itself means base so when the ovule is present at the base of the ovary with the help of placenta so these are five different types of placentation marginal exile parietal free central and basal hope you have understood this diagrams are very very important that's why i have presented the placentation in the form of chart because when chart is there along with the diagrams and along with the points then it becomes very easy to remember and that is why i am doing it in the form of chart so that you remember it well and you need not to look here and there for all the informations clear 
very good moving ahead now one question is there on your screen can you answer this question right now only we have studied a false partition called replum develops in the ovary of placentation tell me where is the false septa in which of the placentation parietal parietal mein kya hota hai students towards maturity the ovary develops a false septa called replum hence the answer of this question becomes a parietal placentation yes or no correct so with this all the worlds of the flower is over you did calyx corolla aestivation androsium attachments of androsium as well as gynosium now next important external feature is fruit now you have studied the male reproductive organ you have studied the female reproductive organ male gametes are produced female gametes are produced fertilization will take place within the ovule to form seed and fruit so first we are going to learn about fruits and then we will learn about seeds so now two external features are left fruit and seed so let's see them one by one fruit what is fruit how will you define the term fruit simply fruit is a ripened ovary once the fertilization takes place within the ovule it gives signal to the ovary wall in order to transform into fruit so what is fruit fruit is characteristic feature of the flowering plants very important flowering plants are your angiosperms why only in angiosperms fruits are produced the reason is that in angiosperms only ovules are protected by ovary wall and it is ovary wall which after fertilization transforms into fruit clear first point second it's a mature or ripened ovary which develops after fertilization however sometimes what happens fruit may also develop without fertilization like your bananas your grapes when that means when within ovule no change is taking place no fertilization but due to difference in hormonal concentration ovary wall is getting the signal to transform into fruit so this type of fruit which develop without fertilization are parthenocarpic fruits so normally fruits are ripened ovary but sometimes without ripening i mean without fertilization also fruit may develop like in case of bananas grapes nowadays for commercial purpose so many fruits are prepared without fertilization papaya you have watermelon you have so there are so many fruits whose seed does not have economic importance normally parthenocarpic fruits my dear students are seedless fruits so in those fruits in which seed is not required seed is not having an economic importance right so in those fruits whose seed does not have an economic importance their people their farmers are using the concept of parthenocarpy and nowadays commercially we are practicing parthenocarpy in bananas grapes pina uh, uh, kya kehte hain aapka watermelon and uh, papaya etc so these are those fruits which are artificially prepared without fertilization and thus their seeds ovules remains as ovules no seed formation takes place only ovary wall transforms into fruit clear yes or no very good now my dear students in some fruits now we can divide fruit also into two category as true fruit and false fruit true fruit and false fruit both the types of fruit they develop after fertilization first thing in true fruits beta only ovary contribute in fruit formation that means when fertilization takes place then if only ovary is transforming into fruit then that is known as true fruit correct false fruit when along with ovary 
when some other floral part like thalamus is also contributing in fruit formation then such fruits are known as false fruit correct like for example apple apple is a false fruit why because during the formation of apple along with ovary thalamus is also used up so therefore it is called as false fruit true fruit only ovary like for example mango right and third category we made as parthenocarpic that means the fruit that develops without fertilization so that is called as parthenocarpic three types of fruit i hope they are clear right moving ahead structurally fruit consist of how many parts so if i talk about structurally so structurally my dear students fruit consist of two parts one is the fruit wall that is called as pericarp and second is seeds so structurally fruit consist of two parts the pericarp and the seeds now this pericarp can be either differentiated or undifferentiated may be differentiated or undifferentiated differentiated means when the pericarp is divided into three sub layers that is epicarp mesocarp and endocarp epicarp the outermost layer of pericarp the middle one mesocarp and the innermost is endocarp undifferentiated means only pericarp as individual layer is present no further divisions the fruit in which pericarp is differentiated those fruits are known as fleshy fruits like your mango when you eat mango the covering which you remove while eating is epicarp the juicy part which you eat is actually mesocarp the inside stony part which you in hindi call as guthli that is your endocarp and when you open that endocarp you see a seed inside it so that epicarp mesocarp and endocarp together they are pericarp they are differentiated hence mango is a fleshy fruit correct if pericarp is undifferentiated then such fruits are known as dry fruits like for example legume p see this wait this is your p na right p is actually the fruit which you get you which you buy from the market is actually the fruit it's legume what it is having it is having the covering when you open the covering you get the seeds inside it so typically in case of p p is a dry fruit this p is a dry fruit why because in this this pericarp is undifferentiated it is not having further layers this th there's a direct pericarp you open it and inside you find the seeds so when only two layers are there pericarp and seed it is a dry fruit when this pericarp is differentiated then it is a fleshy fruit clear or not so how many types of fruit have you studied true fruit only ovary false fruit along with ovary if some other floral parts like thalamus contribute in formation parthenocarpic fruit the fruit which develops without fertilization dry fruit pericarp is undifferentiated fleshy fruit pericarp is differentiated into three sub layers correct and now these layers they encloses the seed so structurally fruit consist of two parts pericarp and seeds hope you have understood now one category of fleshy fruit which is there in your syllabus is droop so droop is a simple true fleshy fruit so what is droop 
droop comes in the category of simple fleshy and true fruit why because it develops from syncarpus carpels fleshy because pericarp is differentiated and true why because only ovary is contributing in the formation of fruit so droop is a simple fleshy true fruit right now droop it develops from a flower who is having only one carpel so it is a monocarpellary superior ovary fruit superior ovary means when ovary is placed above the thalamus and all other whorls are arising below it so such an ovary is known as superior ovary so droop develops from monocarpellary syncarpus superior ovary correct now since it is a fleshy fruit so pericarp is differentiated into three sub layers epicarp mesocarp and endocarp my dear students in case of droop usually endocarp is stony right epicarp is the outermost covering and the middle part is mesocarp the examples in droop are two which you have to learn one is mango and second is coconut in mango the edible part is the juicy mesocarp it is the edible part however in case of coconut mesocarp are fibrous and they are used for making the mats and all so mesocarp are fibrous so what is edible in coconut edible in case of coconut is its endosperm right so the edible part of it comes in your exam for coconut your answer should be endosperm for mango it is mesocarp right in both the case endocarp is stony am i clear with the fruit what you have to do for fruits you should know what is true fruit false fruit parthenocarpic fruit apart from this you should know dry fruit and fleshy fruit and then you should know the details of droop so droop is a simple fleshy true fruit right pericarp is well differentiated endocarp is usually stony two examples you have to learn coconut and mango and what is edible in them so in case of mango the edible part is mesocarp in case of coconut that mesocarp is fibrous hence the edible portion is endosperm right clear okay so this much you have to do for fruit now within fruits are present ripened ovules that is your seeds and this is the last external feature of the chapter after this we will only do the families correct so seeds what are seeds seeds are ripened ovule actually within the seed only fertilization takes place zygote formation takes place once zygote is produced within the ovule the ovule transforms into seed so seeds are ripened ovules correct second point structurally seed comprises of three part so structurally if i talk about seed then my dear students they comprise of three part most important is the seed coat 
सीड कोट इज द कवरिंग ऑफ द सीड कवरिंग राइट इट डेवलप्स फ्रॉम द इंटेग्यूमेंट्स इफ यू रिमेंबर द स्ट्रक्चर ऑफ ओव्यूल लाइक दिस समवॉट ठीक सपोज दिस इज अ ओव्यूल so the coverings of the ovule were called as integuments usually there are two layers of in integument one outer integument and another inner integument right now the outer integument after fertilization develop into testa and inner integument develop into tegmen together they are the parts of seed coat so seed coat the covering of the seed is formed by integument integument is bilayered usually it is bitegmic outer and inner integument outer integument forms the harder part of the seed coat called tegmen and the inner integument forms the softer part of the integument uh, of the seed called tegmen so seed coat has two layers the testa and the tegmen clear yes or no so structurally seed comprises of how many parts it comprises of three part number one is the seed coat seed coat it is the covering of the seed which develops from the integuments integuments that are two in number usually the outer develops into testa and the inner develop into tegmen right now this seed suppose this is the seed coat this is one of the seed which i have drawn and this is the seed coat now this seed coat encloses a embryo that develops after fertilization from zygote so second part in the seed is embryo embryo represents that group of actively dividing cells which when get the favorable condition start germinating into plumule and radical plus also give rise to cotyledons so when embryo develop they give rise to plumule radical and cotyledons the food reserve material cotyledon may be two or may be one may be one may be two if one cotyledon develops from the embryo it is a monocot seed and if two it is a monocot seed and if two cotyledons develop then it is a dicot seed correct yes or no so embryo is made up of radical plumule plumule is missing okay an embryonal axis make it as plumule and either one or two cotyledons one cotyledons in case of monocots like wheat and maize and two cotyledons in case of dicots like grams and p correct so this is your seed coat and this is your embryo two parts clear of the seed now third part may or may not be present that is the nutritionally reserve region called endosperm endosperm is persistent in the seeds of monocot however they are consumed up in case of dicots so dicots are non endospermic but monocots are endospermic therefore three parts three typical parts of the seed are number 1 seed coat that develops from the integument embryo that develops after fertilization from zygote endosperm that that is a result of triple fusion endosperm may or may not be present they are found in monocot seeds however they are absent from dicot seeds clear so this is all about the seed you have to remember what is seed definition it's a ripened ovule 
structurally seed is made up of how many parts three part seed coat you should know from where it is coming it is coming from the integument it can be two layered testa and tegmen coming to embryo embryo is actually the main uh, group of cells that will develop into a new plant when it starts growing it will give rise to plumule radical and cotyledon number of cotyledon may be one may be two one monocot two dicot clear apart from embryo then comes the endosperm presence of endosperm is not 100% it may be found in monocots and it is not found in case of dicots correct so this much you have to do for seeds now moving ahead towards the structure of monocot and dicot seeds separately abhi you have studied the general thing what is monocot seed what is dicot seed now you are going to see them in detail so first we are going to talk about structure of dicot seed nothing you have to do in this first point you have to remember in dicot seeds they are non endospermic in them endosperm is not found one exception is there castor castor is a dicot but in its seed endosperm is found otherwise dicot seeds are non endospermic and second point that you have to remember the embryo give rise to two cotyledons that is why they are called as dicots coming to the major one which actually you have to remember is the structure of a monocot seed correct now monocot seeds first of all they are endospermic why because in them endosperm is persistent there is one exception orchids orchids my dear students they are monocots but in their seed endosperm is persistent exceptions you have to remember for both dicot as well as monocot right for dicot exception is castor for monocot exception is orchid right so now monocot seeds normally consist of three part that is the seed coat embryo and endosperm right structurally it consists of how many parts three parts now i am going to show you the diagram of one monocot seed that is maize so maize is one of the monocot plant its seeds are monocot seeds right in case of maize seed coat is fused with the fruit wall the fruit wall and seed coat in case of maize is same so i'm writing here with respect to maize that seed coat is fused with the fruit wall which is also called as pericarp thus maize seeds are coming under dry fruit category so now maize so if i want to draw the diagram of a maize seed so this is how am i going to draw right structurally it consists of how many parts three parts seed coat which is fused with the fruit wall so this is the seed coat which you can also write as fruit wall you know why now this seed coat inside it encloses the triploid endosperm and the diploid embryo persistent endosperm so this is endosperm correct and it has embryo as well embryo is represented by three regions three parts plumule radical and one cotyledon that is called as scutellum it is a protective shield like structure called scutellum so this actually is your embryo which has three parts one is scutellum what is scutellum 
Scutellum, my dear students, is the cotyledon of monocots. The name you have to remember, scutellum. Now, on the top, there is plumule, which is going to develop later into shoot system. In case of monocots, the plumule are protected by leafy structure called coleoptile. Right? Apart from this, they have radical that develops into root system. Similarly, radical is also protected by a layer called coleoriza. Presence of coleoriza and coleoptile is a feature of monocot seeds. Right? Now, one more thing. Endosperm and embryo, they are separated from each other with the help of triploid proteinaceous layer called Eluron layer that is derived from endosperm. So what is Eluron? Eluron is a triploid proteinaceous layer that develops from endosperm. Endosperm is 3N, embryo is 2N. This eluron is also 3N. Why? Because it is a derivative of endosperm and it separates the endosperm from the embryo. It is proteinaceous in nature. Yes or no? Clear to everybody that what is the structure of a monocot seeds? A typical monocot seed comprises of three part seed coat, embryo, endosperm. Seed coat is the covering that encloses the embryo and the endosperm. Embryo develops into plumule which is protected by coleoptile, radical which is protected by coleoriza and one cotyledon which is known as scutellum. Right? So this is how the structure of monocot seed is there. It is very, very important. Usually questions are asked from this diagram. This diagram will again come in class 12th second chapter. In fact, this whole chapter, this whole morphology chapter is going to be repeated. Parts of this chapter will be repeated in class 12th both in first chapter of class 12th as well as in the second chapter of class 12th. So please understand the importance of this chapter. So therefore it becomes very important from the point of view of NEET as well. NEET ke liye bhi, it is extremely important. See in 11th is also there and it is also there in 12th. So you can understand that how much attention you have to pay for this chapter. And my dear students, let me tell you, there is no escape for hard work. It's a personal experience which I am telling you. Whenever I try to escape, whenever I try to like make an excuse, whenever I try to avoid hard work, I always land myself into troubles. Correct? So it's my personal experience that never try to take a shortcut. There are no shortcuts in life. Correct? You may use shortcuts in games, in traffic you may go through a shortcut. But when it comes to life and experiences of life, there are no shortcuts. If anybody is saying to you that, Are, do this much, you will pass the need. No. Nobody can tell that how much to do, what to do in order to crack need. The paper is set by some different people whom we never meet. We don't know their mindset. They are preparing according to their own uh, feelings and thoughts. Right? So we as students, we have to cover each and every section, specifically of NCRT. When it comes for biology, NCRT is very, very important. Please, please do not miss any corner of NCRT, any line of NCRT. No, no need to miss. If you miss, question may be asked from that section only. 
so if you really want to score good if you really want to become a winner in this race then please please focus on ncert my whole lecture if you see and compare 99.9% i have tried to cover ncert tit bits may be left i am also a human you are also a human so somewhere some parts may be left if you find any confusion then please write it in the chat box i will answer to your questions please but write some justified questions write some write some meaningful questions so that i am able to answer them avoid all the new sins in the life right now it's a high time if you are really preparing for neat if your real goal is to crack neat and to enter into medical colleges then it is a high time to avoid all the new sins have you seen a horse when a horse is moving now then the horse rider what they do they keep a mask in front of the horse eyes like this correct why are they keeping that mask in front of the horse eyes so that horse only see the goal horse do not see anything which is right or left because if the horse will see anything right and left it may get distracted that is why horse riders what they do they keep a covering they don't let the eyes of the horse watch right and left so horse is not able to view he it is only focusing on the target running running and just focusing on the target to reach the final destination so now it's a high time to be like a horse put glasses in front of your eyes cover your eyes like this no need to see what is right what is left what mummy is doing what papa is doing what this fellow that for no nothing you just have to focus on what is important for you and right now the only one thing which is important is neat examination so if you are really really interested in cracking neat see if not interested then nobody can help you not even i not even god nobody but if you really want to crack neat then this is the right platform where you are here on this pw english medium channel all the videos will be uploaded one by one from all the subjects for both iit neat as well as boards so please if you are really focusing if you really want to do it crack neat crack your board examination get good marks whatever it is then do watch all the lectures according to your convenience and and practice read ncert learn ncert clear with this your seed portion is also over now the last segment of the chapter is discussion of families so before we start with the discussion part of the families we have some technical terms that we that we will use in the families while discussing families and you should know them and let me remind you you know all those technical terms i'm just going to give you an overview fatafat se we are going to quickly revise all the terminologies that will be used in family description so you have basically three families to study two dicot families and one monocot family that is leguminaceae solanaceae and liliaceae so that all the three families we are going to do in comparison mode in a chart like manner so that learning becomes easy for you but before starting that let's see some technical terms and how to symbolize them right now the first symbol that you are going to use is a dot when you will draw floral diagram remember your floral diagrams are incomplete without this dot so when you place the dot then only your floral diagram is accepted this dot is the mother axis it represents that how you have drawn the floral diagram that outermost layer is what inner is layer is what so actually this dot is mother axis which tells that you have drawn your floral diagram from outer to inner worlds correct so this dot is actually the mother axis 
some symbols like a plus sign within a circle means radial symmetry a percentage sign means zygomorphic or bilateral symmetry this sign means bisexuality that means a flower is having both male as well as female reproductive organ but if flower is only staminate means it is unisexual flower and in unisexual it is only having androsium then it is called a staminate flower so you have to represent by a circle with a arrow this symbol is again unisexual but pistillate flower moving ahead k term means we are talking about the outermost world that is calyx now or below in the subscript if you, if you write n n means the number of sepals in calyx and if it is not within a bracket then it represents polysepalous condition if bracket is there gamosepalous condition after k comes c c means corolla similarly c ke niche n means polypetalous condition but if you close this n this means fused that means gamopetalous after corolla comes androsium which is represented by symbol a the male reproductive organ similarly a subscript n but not within bracket polyandrous all the stamens are free now if androsium is attached epipetalous condition then c and a dome shaped structure connecting the a and c this is epipetalous now sometimes like in lily you find corolla and calyx they are fused that condition is p perianth in lily only you see that androsium and perianth are attached epiphyllous condition after androsium comes the innermost whorl that is represented by g gynosium gynosium may have three conditions superior ovary inferior ovary and half inferior so when you keep a hyphen below g it is superior or hypogynous ovary if you keep the hyphen above g then it is inferior ovary or perigynous ovary and if you place the hyphen at the level of g half inferior or perigynous ovary correct so these are certain terminologies and their symbols terminology you all know we have already done all these terminologies while i was while i was explaining you the chapter and these are the symbols which now i am telling you and these symbols you are going to use in your family description while writing the floral formula correct so i hope this concept is clear what is mother axis and role of mother axis and all the symbols no doubts nothing shall we move ahead towards the last last segment that is family description the three families which are there in your syllabus are leguminacy solanacy and liliacy liliacy is a monocot family and remaining two are dicot families leguminacy and solanacy so let's start with the floral features correct so in floral features number 1 we are going to discuss about inflorescence leguminacy inflorescence is racemose type 
that means the floral axis do not terminate into a flower it is of indefinite length and flowers are born in acropetal order solanaceae flowers may be solitary or axillary or shows cymose in florescens that means the tip terminates into a flower same is with liliaceae either flowers are born, born solitary if they are born in clusters then their inflorescence pattern is cymose type clear moving ahead sexuality flower what is the nature of the flower so in case of leguminaceae flowers are bisexual flowers are bisexual in nature if i talk about with symmetry they are bilateral in symmetry if i talk about solanaceae they are also bisexual see i'm only using the symbols will you understand it now very good bisexual but symmetry is actinomorphic liliaceae bisexual symmetry actinomorphic that means flower can be divided into two equal half from any plane is radial symmetry seen in case of solanaceae and liliaceae next let's talk about the calyx in case of leguminaceae the number of sepals are 5 they are fused means they are gamosepalous and aestivation they exhibit is valvate or imbricate correct coming to solanaceae again they have five sepals but they are free polyandrous condition they show epipetalous wait five sepals sorry they don't show polyandrous condition yeah there are five sepals which are fused fused means they are showing gamosepalous condition with valvate aestivation correct coming to liliaceae beta liliaceae mein calyx and corolla they are fused to form perianth so first i'll tell you about the calyx and corolla both of solanaceae and leguminaceae then we will come to liliaceae because in liliaceae calyx and corolla will be studied as one perianth so coming back to leguminaceae let's talk about corolla they are having how many petals five petals with special aestivation vexillary where there is one standard two lateral wings and two smallest keel which are fused this is how you are going to symbolize corolla correct moving ahead to solanaceae solanaceae mein corolla they are five they are having five petals which are fused gamo petalous condition with valvate aestivation right now coming to liliaceae liliaceae mein they both are fused to form perianth having 3 plus 3 fused condition is there so bracket has to be drawn and condition is 3 plus 3 so i hope till inflorescence flower calyx and corolla is clear for all the three families now moving ahead towards androsium so in case of leguminaceae androsium number of stamens are 10 they show diadelphous condition and anthers are dithecus 
it's 9 plus 1 9 stamens they fuse to form one bundle and the 10th stamen is left free so overall two bundles coming to solanaceae solanaceae is having five stamens they are free from each other polyandrous but they show epipetalous situation that means they are joined to the petals right coming to androsium of liliaceae liliaceae mein beta kya hai epiphyllous condition the stamens are attached to the perianth and the condition is total six stamens are there arranged in three plus three manner correct yes or no now moving ahead to gynosium gynosium is the innermost Whorl, which is the female reproductive organ, in case of uh, leguminacy, number of carpel is one, it is monocarpillary, ovary is superior with marginal placentation. Right? Coming to Solanaceae, in Solanaceae, there are two carpels, bicarpillary. The carpels are fused. So, syncarpus. Ovary is again superior. So, superior ovary. Placentation is exile with swollen placenta. Placenta is slightly swollen in the center. Right? Coming to Liliaceae. Liliaceae is having three carpels. Tricarpillary condition. All the carpels are fused. Syncarpus. Ovary is again superior. With exile placentation. Correct? Next feature is fruit. In case of leguminacy, fruit I told you, P. legume. Then, solanaceae. Solanaceae, fruit is either capsule or berry. In case of liliaceae, fruits is usually capsule, rarely berry. Seeds. If I talk about seeds, leguminacy seeds are non endospermous. They do not have persistent endosperm. And number of seed may be one too many. Just remember the example of P. Best example to remember. Lilies, uh, like solanaceae. Solanaceae seeds are endospermous. In them, endosperm is persistent. Coming to Liliaceae also, Liliaceae being a monocot family, endosperm is persistent in their seeds. So, seeds are endospermic. Clear? So, this is about all the features which you have to remember. Simple. See, I have learnt all these things. Why? Because I am reading it consistently. I read them whenever I get the time. So, as student also, you have to do the same. I understand you have four subjects. But see, you will become doctor one day. Doc, being a doctor student, it is such a noble profession. Everybody, you have gone through the time of COVID. In COVID, you must have realized the importance of being a doctor. India is really lacking in number of doctors. India is in bad need of having good doctors. So why not you become that one? Right? It is a very noble profession, very kind profession. Everybody is going to give you respect. You will become like a god on earth. And if you really want to be a god on earth, then please start practicing. Start learning. Start studying. Yes or no? Will you do this guys? So I hope all the three families still here are clear to everyone. 
the description part is done the last segment which is left is the floral formula as well as the floral diagram and the examples now floral formula is very very simple you have already studied the features you just have to sum up all the features which you have to study in a sequence from outer to inner worlds and by using the symbols so first in the floral formula you mention about the symmetry so when it comes to leguminaceae the symmetry is zygomorphic followed by sexuality bisexual followed by outermost world that is calyx k how many calyx sepals were there five just check it are there five or not see so there are five sepals which are fused so fused means you have to make a bracket followed by c corolla how many five with vexillary estivation two plus two plus one where the two anterior most key, uh, keel are fused after corolla will come androsium diadelphous condition two bundles nine fused one free gynosium superior ovary with one carpel so this is the floral formula of leguminaceae similarly you have to do for solanaceae as well solanaceae actinomorphy correct bisexuality then number of calyx 5 fused corolla 5 fused androsium 5 polyandrous but epipetalous yes then gynosium superior to bicarpellary simple floral formula is ready right coming to liliaceae actinomorphy bisexuality no calyx no corolla rather they have perianth 3 plus 3 similar goes for androsium six stamens in arranged in manner 3 plus 3 epiphyllous condition gynosium superior 3 fused so these are the simple floral formulas you can learn the floral formulas and when you once you recognize the floral formula you get to know the features as well by looking simply at the floral formulas you can tell about the features of each family right now coming to the floral diagram part let's draw the floral diagram one by one for all the three given families for starting with liliaceae Number one thing is to draw a mother axis. Very very important. If you miss this mother axis, your whole floral diagram, be it correct, it will be marked zero wrong. Right. So first, how many sepals? Outer to inner five. Fused condition. Valvate estivation. See, am I drawing it correct? One, two, three, four, five. Valvate estivation. Fused. Then vexillary estivation. large standard two lateral wings two fused anterior most keel correct coming to androsium 10 androsium two bundle so one nine fused one two three four five six seven eight and nine correct then placentation marginal placentation so ovaries how many chamber monocarpellary so chamber within the ovary will be only one with what kind of placentation marginal placentation ovules born in two rows and two alternate rows rows so this is how you have to represent the floral diagram of leguminaceae coming to the second one that is solanaceae you are going to start with the mother axis first point five sepals which shows again valvate estivation gamosepalous condition 1 2 3 4 5 gamosepalous coming to petals again gamopetalous only 
five right followed by androsium how many five epipetalous so there are five stamens all are attached to their the stalks their filaments are attached to the petals bilocular two carpels you have to draw two chambers placenta is slightly swollen in the center obliquely placed ovary and ovules in exile manner so this is how the diagram the floral diagram of solanaceae is i hope it is clear moving ahead towards the third one which is liliaceae liliaceae slightly uh, in uh, i don't know uh, now you are used to it beyblade na there was a one instrument uh, with which i i think i used to play 4 to 5 years not not 4 to 5 about 10 8 to 9 years back with a beyblade so this what i feel that the floral diagram of liliaceae is slightly somewhat like beyblade only some some like extra uh, structures coming out from the floral diagram now see this so in case of liliaceae instead of calyx or corolla perianth is present so first you have to draw the mother axis very important now there are three sepals right and three petals correct but they all are fused to each other so this is how it happens they are fused to each other so like this let me draw it little bit more properly there are how many petals sepals three and how many petals again three but they are fused to each other so somewhat you have to draw it in this manner now this is called as perianth with three sepals and three petals fused to each other as one unit now there are androsium how many stamens six three and remaining three right six stamens now central ovary how trilocular means three carpels three carpellary three chambers i have drawn and where the placentation is exile so exile placentation this is how the floral diagram of liliaceae is so these are the three floral diagrams which you have to remember very very important now coming to the last segment 1 2 3 4 oh i just rubbed it so sorry 1 2 3 4 5 right okay now coming to the last part that is the example some examples only i'm going to quote over here remaining you can directly learn from the ncrt nothing extra nothing more than ncrt in liliaceae the best example which you can learn is p normal pea that is garden pea sweet pea lupin the dye yielding indigo ferra medicinal muleti all other example of sun hemp trifolium all other examples which you have to remember for leguminaceae with their respective economic importance solanaceae if it comes to food edible ones tomatoes potatoes brinjal some ornamentals one like petunia ashwagandha as medicinal importance right etc learn from ncrt liliaceae most important onion garlic lily the one which obtain the chemical called colchicin for inhibiting cell division colchicum autumnal etc so remaining examples also you can learn directly from your ncrt and with this finally finally the chapter is over i hope 
you find this chapter interesting with all the diagrams which i have drawn from the beginning till the end for families my dear student only only pay attention to the ones which are given in ncrt you need not to do anything extra apart from it examples also no need to worry no need to go here and there only learn the examples which are given in your ncrt that's it if you do them 100% then surely nobody can stop you from scoring marks from this chapter at least right and let me tell you from neat point of view this chapter is very important you cannot miss it you cannot ignore it and i would like to continue with some questions as well so that i hope i only have one question yeah no two questions i have or three questions i have please try to solve them with this we would like to end the session so first question is colchicin is obtained from first of all colchicin is a chemical which is inhibitory it does not allow the formation of spindles during cell division and it is obtained from colchicum autumnale a member of liliaceae thus the answer of this question becomes c moving ahead next question which of the following is a source of dye dye is obtained from indigo fera plant that is a member of leguminaceae hence answer becomes b right moving ahead yes so with this the session for today is over at last i would like to conclude the closing statement which i would like to give you is keep moving ahead keep moving ahead no need to look back if you look back if you turn around you will be lost so no need to look back always look front because when you're looking front you come to know that how many students are ahead of you and you get motivated so that you can cross all those students no need to look back whatever happened in the past is past think about future plan your future no need to rely on your past live in present plan your future forget about the past with this i would like to end my session hope you have enjoyed it hope you like the session if yes then do not forget to like and comment on the section on this video share with your friends help your friends in return god will help you so thank you guys see you bye bye take care everybody work hard study hard